Imagine someone doesn't know Sikhi at all. Someone's never heard of the Sikh Dharam. Imagine explaining the Sikh Dharam to him. It's like the craziest movie plot ever. <laughs> like just just think about it, yeah. Mm. Explain it to Sikhi, someone has no idea. And we've got the craziest characters that you can even imagine. I watch I watch a lot of films. I mean a lot a lot of films. Mm. Like all of us we grew up watching movies, watching <laughs> sitcoms, everything. What's your favourite film? There's a couple. There's one um, Seven Samurai oh, yeah. by Akira Kurosawa. Mm. Braveheart, all-time favorite. Obviously, most things love Braveheart. Mm. Last Samurai. There's there's a couple. Mm. There's a couple, but those are the ones that really stand out. And mm. so, Atharam is greater than any of those movies. Mm. Might not, imagine coming and explaining to someone a part of our religion. So we worship weapons. Mm. Imagine a plot of a movie. Of this, these are the characters, the tribe. They worship weapons every day. They remember their martyrs two or three times a day, and they do a prayer where they say the names of their martyrs and remember how they were martyred. And they put pictures of their warriors who came before them in each one of their houses. Go to anyone's house, any sex house, yeah. Being if they're not practicing, they'll always have a picture of a shaheed somewhere mm -hmm. in the house. Baba Deep Singh on a calendar or something. Mm -hmm. Every Sikh house has a picture of a martyr who came before them and died for our faith and way of life. We feed everyone. We have an institution, Langar, where we absolutely go out and feed anyone. No questions asked. Anyone comes to us hungry, we will feed them. That's part That's part of this tribe, this warrior castes Dharam. Mm. Like, look at Baik in, in the middle of battle, one of our warriors, one of our Gursiks would go out and feed the enemy mm. and give the enemy water. We have our Guru with us. So we had, we explained to the people, we had 10 Gurus in human form, then we had one Guru in Shabbat form, who we still communicate with and talk to every single day. We take advice from on the daily. And just imagine explaining all this to our Dharam to someone who'd never heard of Sikhi. And explain it, forget talking about the Gurus, the Gurus are beyond contemplation. Just talking about people who followed on the path of Sikhi. So we've got Baba Buddhaji, foremost Sikh, known for their service and everything like that. We've got Baba Bidhi Chand, who's a master thief and gangster. And he gave up his life of being the best thief possible to become a warrior saint. And for the Guru, he went on missions and stole horses and by Manj who save goes across this world into other worlds. We've got the Panj Piyare to explain to someone who's never heard of Sikhi, we have Panj Piyare who gave their heads for the Guru and they passed the test by sacrificing themselves. We've got Baba Deep Singh. Mm. Imagine telling someone about Baba Deep who's never heard of Sikhi and saying this is a warrior of ours who spent his whole life serving the Guru. Then one day in battle he fought without his head, with his head on the palm of his hand. The Battle of Chumkor, the greatest battle to ever take place, will ever, intergalactic, whatever, mm. the greatest battle where 1.8 million warlord, bad boy, toughest of the warriors mm. from all across the world, from Africa, from the Khyber Pass, from Iran, Iraq, from uh, Mongolia, they all came together at Chumkor Sahib to fight against our Guru and 40 warriors. Mm. The greatest battle, the battlefield where they said if each of them got a, a, a handful of mitti and threw it towards the, the killer, they would bury the killer. There were that many of them. That many soldiers came to that battle, the earth shook. Day turned to night because of the dust that rose from their horses, elephants, war dogs, oot and all of that. There were that many battalions that they ball up in and Suraj Prakash Kavi uh, Santok Singh writes that there's that many battalions in between themselves they don't even understand the languages that are spoken. Mm. He speaks about dark warriors coming from the lands of Africa and everything. Mm. No one will believe these stories. No one will believe the stories of Sikhi if you tell them it, mm. and we, we do tell them and sometimes ourselves, our children find it difficult to believe and other people, no way they're going to understand that there's a Dharam on this earth like Sikhi. It doesn't compare compared to any other Dharam, compared to any movie, any book, any script. Sikhi is on a whole different level. And then that's just a few of the worries, not mentioning our mothers, Mata Gujri, who gave Shahidi in the Tanda Burj in Sarhand. She filled her grandchildren with strength to go forward. And in a Kacheri, in a court, where even the greatest kings will grovel on their knees and be intimidated. They walked into the middle of that court and Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh with Nishche, with absolute resolve, they said Fateh in that court. I'd be behind Mir Manu's jails. Like, I don't even need to, that's, it's just crazy. How to use the power of the voices. Like, oh! like just using the voice, if someone's saying, no, you don't talk about my hair. 
We teach them like, you know, when someone goes, oh, your hair looks like a girl. No, my hair is a, of that of a warrior. I have long hair. I am very proud of my long hair. This is my religion. I will never cut my long hair. You know how there's a lot of Sikh kids get, getting bullied and they get beat up and they're targeted because they're sick. And the Nishani that stands out is their gays, it's their gutta, it's their patka, it's their chunni. It's the fact that their gays are targeted. And we saw a lot of these videos. And then me and another Singh from Singh Army podcast were sitting together at his house. And we are still talking, uh, Indy Singh. He used to be an MMA fighter and he won the MMA belt of UK as well. So he knows what he's doing when it comes to martial arts. And we were talking, yo, what can we do? We've got to do something. If something happens, and you're aware of it, you must act as sick. We must act. If we hear someone in our alakas hungry and needs food, we have to act. We've got no choice. We have to do something. We became aware of all this bullying and all this that's going on. But you know what? We've got to do something. Let's get together, travel the country when and however we can, and put on a seminar called Gays Sambal. And the aim is basically to teach people how to look after their gays. And it's too multifaceted. The first thing is we are going to be targeted or some of us are going to be targeted because of our gays and we're going to be bullied. Some people are bullied. How to stand up to bullies, how to fight against them, how to speak up, how to act with confidence. Because it's vital. No one messes with a confident person. Even if you don't have the ability to fight or back up your words, your words alone will deter a lot of people. Okay. So now we travel the country where and when we can. We give the kids script. We give them affirmations like I am sick. I am strong. I am confident. I will never cut my hair. I will stand up for myself. I will speak respectfully. I will take care of everyone. And they're teaching the kids to be respectful to strong. If you're respectful, if you're strong, no one messes with you. And then teaching them some martial art moves, what to do if someone's grabbing your gear, how to build a fence, like some of us are trained with the Jeff Thompson, other martial artists. So we've got experience of what we're doing. And the main thing we're teaching is the ability to stand up for yourself and the mentality. More than knowing how to fight, it's knowing what to fight for and when to fight. So that's what we're instilling in the children. You know what? You speak up. We don't take shit off anyone. We stand up. We're not going to get mugged off. We're not going to get pushed over. We'll speak up where need be. If it's the younger children, we speak up. We tell the teacher, we tell our parents. And teaching them not just about bullying, but any form of abuse. Like One thing we say is, one of the rules that we have when we teach is, no secrets allowed. You're allowed zero secrets from your parents. So that means if uh, someone at a wedding, an uncle, uh, someone at a religious institute, someone in school on the bus some, says something, you know, like, here's some money or here, come uh, come next to me, don't tell anyone. And no, anyone says anything like that, anyone touches you any way inappropriately, you yell, you scream, you make it known straight away. Nothing stays secret. Mm. And also what we teach the kids is the moment, the very first moment someone tries to bully you, someone touches you, that moment straight away you say no. You don't touch that. If you've done it by mistake, understand that this is my religion. You do not touch my turban. And also we're teaching them how to behave. We also tell them, you know what, say please, say thank you, work hard. We explain to them, you have to work hard. It's part of our religion to work hard in everything you do. Your training. Maharaj Guru Nanak Dev Ji gave us three golden rules. One of them is Gerat Guru, to earn your living by honest means. And while you're not earning your living, you're doing other things, training, working, studying. You work hard. You might not be the brightest in the class, but you work the hardest until the task is done. And when instilling this in our kids, giving them that self-confidence, and then teaching them if someone grabs your guti, someone grabs you in a headlock, how to defend all these things. And so we travel the country. And the other things we show them is how to comb their gaze. Because what we want the kids to do and what our aim is by year seven, going into secondary school, every boy and girl should be able to do their own gaze. And it's a thing for boys only. You don't want to be in year seven, 12, 13 years old in the morning. Yeah, like kind of big or 14, 15, year 10, going to your mommy, mom in the morning. Mommy, gutti kardo. It's a bit embarrassing. And then it holds you back and it affects your confidence because you're scared to go on residential trips. Mm, I've been there true. where I don't know how to do my guti. I don't want to go on a trip. Everyone's going to see my long hair. People are going to laugh. Mm. They're going to say, girls have long hair. Mm. Then we teach them and we give them affirmations that we have long hair. We are proud of our long hair. We do not cut it. Yes, it's down to there. Mm. Yes, I'm proud of it. No, I'm not going to show you. And we, we give them that confidence that, you know, if someone is saying about something about your religion or someone else's religion or anyone, 
No, you do not say that. Not just speaking up for themselves, for others, then teaching them how to wash their gears, how to apply a tail to their gears, how to do all these things, how to dial the star and how to be happy with it. And then in training, if the star does come off, it's okay. If you're in the middle of fighting, if the star comes off, don't stop. No, you carry on fighting. When you've got victory, when you've won, then you can pick the other star up and sort it out and do it. And just giving them that confidence because our kids need it. Our kids need to stand up strong. You guys are the virus of the Saibs are they? who went into that court in Sirhand when they were surrounded by the great general Mughals who were shouting down to them, Allahu Akbar, and the shouting and that intimidating court. And they stalked into the middle like tigers and said, Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. We teach the kids, be proud. Never be ashamed of your suru. We teach, and then we see the little girls start standing up and say, no, I'm learning how to push and learning how to fight. And instilling them that confidence to stand up and forward. A poet said this to me that I was talking to. And it was a beautiful way to put it. He said, I'm going to give you the answer. It means it comes. I'm going to give you the answer. So the, what the poet said is, He's like, He's like, pretend you're sitting in, the, in that beautiful garden. If you sit still enough, eventually a bird will come and sit on you. If you sit still enough and you're receptive enough, eventually that little sukham cheese, like a kavata or a bandish, will come and sit on you. Then you have to write it and share it with you. But you say it from an egotistical perspective. You've seen my composition. Mm-hmm. Like composition. Dekhyo, relax. Tera mera kuch nahi gaya mm-hmm. Nothing I can sing doesn't matter. Maybe, I have got bandishes, but I know that those bandishes just come from all the talim. Yeah, they're a product of your they're learning. They're a product of your learning. Yeah, yeah. So, how much of it is yours? How much is it of your ancestors? It's not copyright. Sanjay, yes. <laughs> copyright is not copyright. Sara Sanjay. So, yes, it's your composition. Good. You get credit for it. But you should also know that you're just. You should also know that you're just. You should also know that you're just. And you will have borrowed something from somewhere else and come back to elsewhere. Intuitively. Yeah, without, without even knowing. Without knowing. Mm-hmm. Those things, those rivers flow together. Mm-hmm. And then now, some people that, that are in the diaspora, that are in this field, are starting to get very um, strict about, okay, this is how this bandish is. This is how this bandish is. But then you hear recordings of the same bandish sung by four different people a mm-hmm. hundred years ago. They're all different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they were alive today, ਇਹਨਾਂ I've never thought of myself as having a fear of flying. But sometimes when I'm sitting on a plane, I catch myself saying a little prayer just before takeoff. So, if you're anything like me, then there's something you need to know. You don't have a fear of flying. What you really have is a fear of dying. And with higher wisdom, you can overcome that fear. Higher wisdom teaches us to distinguish our fears from reality because fear is just a false event appearing real it's a story in our mind that we tell ourselves when we worry about flying the reality is that flying is one of the safest modes of transport but our fear tells us that it's extremely dangerous if we're experiencing turbulence on a plane our fear starts imagining the worst and it makes us panic about a disaster that hasn't happened isn't happening now and may never happen once you realize that your fears are just thoughts in your mind then you can start to see through them you can choose not to believe them anymore because all they do is cause you to feel powerless and vulnerable so the next time you feel anxious about flying i want you to give yourself permission to let go of your fears think of them like the clouds that are floating past your window don't hold on to your fear and let it float away as well but before you let go of it there's one more lesson that we should learn when we feel fear it's our mind's way of showing us what attachments we still have 
what things we're not ready to let go of just yet. And the things that we want to hold on to the most is our own life and the life of our loved ones. So this fear of flying is a great reminder that we have yet to accept our own death. When you use your higher wisdom, you understand that death is not something that you can avoid. It will happen to everyone and it can happen at any time. And we all need to embrace this inevitable reality and not be afraid of it. So if you don't like feeling scared and want to overcome your fear, practice every day to be more comfortable with letting go of life. Because you can only be truly free from your fears when you're free from yourself. To learn some of the practices that you can use to overcome your fears, watch this video next. Namaskar Shri Khadak Ko Karo Suhit Chit Lai Pooran Karo Giranth Eh Tum Mohi Karo Sahai Kripa Sind Tum Ri Kripa Jo Kach Mo Par Hoi Racho chand ka ki katha Bani shub sab hoi Kaha buddh prab tuch hamari Barn sakhe mehma jo tihari हम ना सकत कर सिफ्त तुम्हारी आप ले हो तुम कथा सुधारी हम ना सकत कर सिफ्त तुम्हारी आप ले हो तुम कथा सुधारी वाहिगुरु जी का खालसा वाहिगुरु जी की फतेह so, Virji, what is a hukumnama? Great way to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a Sikh, we are only Sikhs because we have a guru. Right. right. Sikh, they say, comes from the Sanskrit word shish, which means some type of student, a learner, a follower. And I think we mentioned this last night, that... A Sikh follows the path. You know, and that's what Pant means. Today, we use the word Pant quite often. Without, I think personally, without diving into the vichar of what the Pant means. Pant means the Guru's path. Then the follower of that Guru's path is the Panti. Mm. The one who follows. So that's meant to be the Guru Sikh, the Chela, the Shish, the student. Now, the Guru's path for us can be subjective. What I mean by that is that yes, there is a uh, very uh, objective path that we all all know of and we all follow, Amrit Vela, Nitnaim, Simran. But then subjectively, it changes in a Guru Sikh's life based on situations. Someone's going through a divorce. Someone's getting married. Someone's looking for a partner. Someone's exiting a career. Someone's joining a career. There's so many subjective scenarios that come. In, in those subjective scenarios, a Sikh needs to understand what is the Guru's path for me today, at this moment. You know, For example, I saw that Abji as well, before we started this podcast, you were looking at a at Hukunama, right? For yourself. And... I would do the same, you know, I also did one as well. Because I want to know what the Guru is thinking about me now. What does the Guru want me to think about? What the Guru what does the Guru feel about me now? What does the Guru want me to feel about? You know? Because I want to mold myself into the Guru. You know, Bhai uh, Gurdas he has this really beautiful word where they talk about what a Sikh is, right? And they say, Murda Huay Marid. 
what is a marid marid means sick right and just in the farsi boli and so it's just play of words but what it, they said a murid is a dead body murda hue murid nagli hovana do a, a shish a sick is that person who doesn't talk what do they mean by here don't talk means that the ego doesn't talk is a dead body and what's interesting is that the same word they continue to say just like a dead body when you put inside a coffin because they're talking looking from the abrahamic kind of side of that you sure they mean don't do podcasts <laughs> don't do- <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. continue when that when the when a sick is placed or sorry when that murid when a dead body is placed in a coffin what happens is that the dead body becomes the coffin over time right right it loses all of his existence down to his nails which are last bit everything kind of dis- you know just this disassembles and becomes dust and then becomes one with the coffin yeah. and the same way a sick is meant to become dead the ego is meant to die and become one with the guru hukanamas are those steps those systematical courses that the guru shares with us so another angle I'm putting to the picture one is a subjective you know personal path that we take every single day the guru teaches us another one is that it's a course that it's playing out we don't know it but the guru knows it yes we think there's nothing systematical about this but look back if someone if a sick takes hook on over the last 5 years look back you'll see there's a course playing out You know, you'll, you'll see that there is a there's a meaning to every single hookah namah that you have received. It's even in 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 like seasons, like you'll see that when you're going through something or your life is going through something and you're taking hookah namah, maraj tanu kese galanu prosreya. Like they're convincing you to take a certain path and to have a certain mindset, and until you don't achieve it, all the hookah namah are so similar. And in, and and as Maharaj, like you said, is like walking you on that path, and that starts to happen, the hukum and amit begin to change. Um, and I feel like the longer you commute, it, 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 it's a huge blessing to the panth that we are able to talk to God at any given moment. <laughs> and it, it's, I think, one of the biggest weaknesses in in anyone's life is a lack of guidance, yes. not having a, a father or mother over your head, not having a proper mentor. Um, you know, this is where a lot of conversations of privilege come from, and we're so privileged that Guru Gobind Singh Pacha, Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj, Guru Grant, they gave us Guru Granth Sahib Ji, Dasan Pacha and the Jyot, all ten of them decided to come and sit inside a Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj, and said at any given moment, ask away. Yeah, ask me what you want to ask me, and I'll advise you exactly what you need. But the thing that hurts me is we've lost the the knowledge that. Well, my guru is sitting right there. I can ask them at any time. Yes, yes. I I think one that's definitely the first step is that we as a, we as a Sikh community has have lost the understanding that we we don't even know what the guru is there for. You know, yeah. The guru is there for us. We're there for the guru. You know, if if uh you know a a child always thinks of their mom, who does the mom think of? The child. Yeah, you know, it's a two-way connection, it's a two-way relationship. Guru Gurbani, Maharaj says, "Vaho vaho bani nirankar hai." It's true that the highest form of bani is nirankar sroop, which is all around us. But imagine, they took that nirankar sroop and preserved it in a physical sroop, which we can see today. Right. Well, Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj speaking to Pai Nanlaji. Pai Nanlaji asked Maharaj a question. They say, Maharaj. What is your form? What a rupa ki hai. So the, the, I think just asking that question takes a lot of kamai. Yeah, a lot of spiritual, you know, achievement because mind just sitting right in front of you. Why are you gonna ask what roop is yours if you realize that this is not the only roop of Maharaj? And Guru Gobind Singh responds and says, "Three roop hai mohe ko suno nandala chitlaay." Hey Nandala, I have three forms: Nirgun, Sargun, and Guru Shabad. So they separated Guru Shabad from Nirgun and Sargun. And when I think about that, I think really hard about it because, as a, as Pacharics, we cannot find everything in steaks. 
We cannot find any DK. We cannot just call up a, a Gyanese and be like, all right, tell me the answer to this. I do that all the time, to be fair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I call you and I'm like, listen, I got to talk on this topic. What do I do next? <laughs> that, that, that is fair. Yeah. But a lot of things will be preserved under a seal. for yeah. Because that is our... That is our systematical course, Swin Maharaj, yes. as Pajatics, you know. Yes, yes. We had to we had to drill away trying to find answers. And when I think about this Nirgun Sargun Gur Shabad, I feel like Gur Shabad is separate because it's a different class of its own. Yeah. You know? Sargun, Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj's physical sroop, the Gur Sikh, Sargun. Nirgun, that sroop, that Barat sroop that you, can, you cannot see, you can only experience. But Gur Shabad, that's through you can go do matha take to you could do parkarma around you could hold your hands together say maharaj manupadesh baksho sache pasha main tota grieve sikh ha i've been attacked by this world maharaj i'm at your feet now you know main firda firda firt firt main hun tuhadi sharan vich aaya ha mainu rakh lo and at that time the updesh that guru sahib gives you the hukam nama that blessed message that maharaj gives you you know that will change someone's life if they can a know that they can go to a guru like you said b if they can understand it uh, i think that brings me to the next point is that how do you understand hukanami i think the first step is reprogramming our brains mm. we look at hukanami we don't read the gurumukhi first of all cuz most of us can't we go straight to the english translations and then based on the english translations we think that we we kind of judge i think you were saying last night either good happy bad sad or or i don't know what they're saying yes do you have an experience on that uh no i agree with you i think that okay to understand why you're taking a hukumnama you have to understand your guru and so kind of what i was talking about last night is we've made our guru into an eight ball <laughs> right uh whether we know about hukumname or don't know about hukumname we get mad at god when something bad happens and we get happy when something good happens we treat god like it's some individual standing up in the clouds that you know is saying yes or no to our every wishes maharaj kende tu naam jap te i will make sure that any anything that you want anything that you desire that ya ichha puriya hon gi It's like a vada that's been given to us. But what we do is when we're going through something, when we have to make a decision, we, you know, take whether it's, you know, the Hukumnama app or whether it's Guru Granth Sahib ji, shake them up and say yes or no, maybe. And then a lot of the the um folks that will contact me, you know, they'll say, "Oh, I didn't have the ask for school or work or relationship or, you know, something going on in their life. What do you think? Like what is Marad saying?" and it's it's normally like very like you know straight for, i mean and, and you know i contact you and i we all contact each other all the you know six contact one another and say what do you think guru sahib is saying to me but the thing is like after a while i realized you know sometimes it's not a yes or no we're putting maharaj into a corner and saying give me a yes or no yeah and maharaj turns around and says you know you don't even know what you don't even know <laughs> <laughs> you don't realize what i have planned for you but i'm not going to allow those karam to come up into your life until a certain naam bani seva kirtan and maharaj will prescribe in the hukumnama what it is that you need to do right. and sometimes hukumnama may come really strict and you think to yourself man you know like what 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 does this mean um so you know uh, before the the recording i was thinking about you know like what kind of hukumname have i received or have people received where it seems like maraj dant raha maraj is saying like you've done a bad job or something like that but it's that's not really the case <laughs> um and so i think like before we get to like the art there's a a baseline philosophy that we have to understand and that is we think about akal purak and our relationship with them as there's maraj and there's me what we really need to see is that there is the journey of the the self going into the atma and there's the man and the man is such a a beast that it's going to indulge in kaam krodh lobh moh hankar and as it's doing those things but listen me and you 
and any other sick, we always tell ourselves, tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up at Amrit Villa and I'm going to do my Bhagdi. Or I, I have to, I want to start doing a Sukhmani Saab a day. I want to start my Saj Bhat and I want to do at least 10, 15 Angs. Yeah. It's there. The Icha is there. But as soon as we get to it, something is going on with the man. It's too cold. They don't want to get out of the chadid, you know, at Amrit Villa or the Sahaj Bhat. You're like, oh, I've had a long day at work today. I don't know if I want to sit down and read. Something always comes up. It is only with Gur Prasad that you can even interact with Barney. Yeah. No matter how much the man says. Yeah. So would the Guru in their Hukumrama not want to wake your man up? Hmm. Would Maharaj not want to... Uh, you know, show you that, listen, your mind is going to play these games on you, but I'm going to show you what's out there. Mm. And what ends up happening is we look at these hukamaname and we go, my guru is mad with me. I'm not a good Sikh. I don't want to take a hukamaname anymore. Mm. I'm afraid of, of going into the Gurdwara because I know I've been a sinner. Once I get myself together, mm. I start doing the right amount of Nam Simran, then I'll go back to Maharaj. Mm. We think that we can fix ourselves and then we will be worthy of taking a Hukum Nama or of Gurbani. Mm. It is actually Gurbani and Hukum Nama that make us worthy. So we are trying to clean ourselves without water and saying water is so pavitr that I don't want to make the water dirty by yeah. stepping in it. Yeah. But it's the water that's going to clean you. Exactly. And there's a beautiful Shabbat by, by Guru Tegh Badr Pacha that actually goes through describing exactly what the man is. And then Maharaj gives the ailment. Hmm. Uh, they give the cure, right? So Maharaj goes, very short Shabbat. Ik oankar satgur prasad. Rag Devgandari Mahala Noma. Yehman Nekana Keheo Kare. Yehman, my mind. Nekana Keheo Kare. Every time I tell it to do something good, anytime I give it advice, it doesn't listen. Seek Sekai Reheo Apni. See Durmata Te Na Tare. Rahao. I'm so tired of giving my mind instructions, it doesn't refrain from taking part in, in evil things. I mean, this comes with everything, especially with Nam, Bani, and like the Gur Sekrasta, but it definitely comes even with like exercise, good diet, any type of uh, lifestyle change. Madhmaya ke peo bavaro har jas nehe uchre. It's gone insane. Maya de ranga de vich paake. Convinced with the illusion that's around it, it's intoxicated and it doesn't do anything to praise a Maharaj. Kar par panch jagat ko it practices deceit it cheats the world and by doing it it feels satisfied it feels satisfied doing you know oh i don't have time for netanim today i have to go to work because it's going to feed me you know i don't have time for that because i want to go out with my friends tonight we're so stuck in our world that we'll do whatever is going to satisfy our minds Gee. but not what will satisfy our guru so then Maharaj says, listen, Swan Pooch Jo Hoy. Same way, Swan is a kutta. Pooch is the tail of a dog. Jo Hoy. The same way that a dog's tail. Na sudo keheo na kaan atare. In the same way that you can't straighten out a dog's tail and keep it straight, my mind won't listen to what I tell it no matter how much I try. Right. So what does Maharaj tell us here? It's your nature. Mm. is the nature of the mind because mm. you yourself are made up of different components mm. there's the mind there's a chit there's a buddha there's the hankar but we barely start discovering sikhi and we jump to these large conclusions of I'm worthless I'm useless and we fall into guilt Mara says listen no need to be guilt ridden kaho nanak paj ram naam nit jake kaj sare so they go through this entire their bani and they say koshani ho sada but in the end they go kaho nanak ki nanak bol reha hai paj ram na okay vaheguru 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 de naam te tusi focus karo and what will happen nit ja ke vaheguru nit ja te kaaj sare all of our affairs will be solved 
The Guru has literally handed us everything. And what happens to us is we fall into guilt. We fall into, I'm not good enough for Barney. I'm not good enough for, for being a Gursik. I'm not good enough to wear a Bana. Which again, it's great when it's coming from a place of humility, but it's harmful when it's coming from a place of actually feeling worthless to a point of detriment. Hmm. And so I feel that, I, I don't know if you've seen a lot of this, but I've seen a lot of people afraid of taking a Hukumanama because they're afraid that Maharaj will yell at them. Hmm. And then it does a number on their mental health hmm. because the gyan isn't there hmm. of no tera kiya meetha lage e- even if you yell at me oh menu meetha lagna hai but we don't know how onu meetha kidda samjhna kidda how do you how do you recognize that you know it's good like imagine if this hukumnama had been given and you know the one that we just read now would a person fall into Maharaj ne mainu kutte di poochha kya right or would it fall into wait a minute maharaj just told me ki hum sar deen dayal na tum sar ab patiyar kya ki jaye it has to be a um, a journey forward to that point we can expect um well what what often i would see is that a sikh when they first interact with hukunam depending on where they are in their spiritual jeevan Dokanama will affect them differently. When it does take a play on their mental health, you can say, right? Well, there's two things in play here. You know, what mental health really is to preserve the ego. I mean, like that's what I've understood to be. Yes, there it, it is health and related and we all go through it. I have my downs as well. Like I'm not saying that depression doesn't exist, anxiety doesn't exist. No, absolutely. There. There's chemical imbalances. There's medicine there's for the, that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But beyond that, on a day-to-day, anxieties and depressions. G. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. On that level, you know, when the Hokanama speaks to us like in in that way, if we are not able to connect with the Hokanama, besides getting the gyan from a guru sikh, a fellow brother or sister to explain what what Maj is saying, if that still is causing pain, know that to be good pain. That's the way I will look at it. Uh. O- only. I would only say that now after being through it myself. You know, I could look back in retrospect and be like that was good pain. Why? Because now when I read the Hukunama and I know that Maharaj is like danda la ke khade hoye hai, like sikha ki karda hai na, and then like satwachi Maharaj, galti ho gayi. Bakhsh do. Meri galti. So you right, you know right away you're wrong. When the beginning you don't know because yeah. you haven't developed that relationship with Maharaj. You know, in living in the West, we've kind of taken on a culture of even not listening to our parents. Yep. Right? Not listening to anyone older cuz we're like you're infringing on my freedoms. Yeah. Right? Whereas to understand the relationship between a Sikh and a Guru, it's not I get to be your Sikh and I receive all the goodies that you give me. Right? Then da de lande tak pa hai. It's not just that. It's not just the givers and they keep giving and I'm going to get tired of receiving and that's how look how cool our relationship is. It it becomes more like a parent scolding a child and saying if you don't walk on my path outside of this path like in in some in a lot of places in barney you'll read like you'll be boiled alive you'll be beaten you'll be dragged from the hair you know jamdoot will come and get you and that's when you're like oh my god why is the guru saying this to me right but instead of seeing it that way i think like If we saw it as look my parent is telling me if you don't follow the rules of this house if I kick you out of this house out there there's gangsters there's robbers there's chor and daku that will come and get you yeah see it that way yeah i'm still in the house because you're still speaking to me yeah. guru saab yeah. and so because that's the case whatever you're telling me to do i better go and do it yeah with sangat however it's possible and then even do banti i don't know how to follow this but you help me follow it yeah the, the just the glory of having guru saab holding your arm and even if they scold you saying guru saab it's on you save me i think that is a dynamic that i'm hoping in this conversation that our mans and anybody listening is able to know that Your guru's right there. But you have to take the step. I have to take the step to speak to them, go into their sharan. 
go into their sanctuary, fall at their feet, and say, Maharaj, ham nirguni aare kogur nahi, aap tars pe hoi. Wow. Jo tars hogi, tars pe a mehramat hoi, wow. satgur sajjan me lea. Wow. And when you see Jadu Mitta Tas Karonge, then I will receive you as a best friend. Why, Guru? I will receive you as my lover. Why, Guru? Right? And each Sikh has the access for that. Ji. Ji. But we, we do spend a lot of time afraid of Maharaj. I want to bring back to the point you started off with. In the West, we have this perception that, you know, if someone older, wiser, you know, is telling us to do something, is infringing in our freedom, like you were saying, right? And I, I really agree that the, in the Western sphere, we have this mentality now that we, so we often people as I say that, why do I have to respect the Guru? Why, wh- what do I need to, why does he need it? Right. Why does he need, why does, okay, let's say the Guru is a big word there, right? Let's say like an Ustad, a teacher, why does a teacher need that respect? Are they ego hungry? No. What we don't understand is that that respect that we're giving to someone elder, someone wiser, the guru, ustad, teacher, is not for them, it's for us. It's for us. The more we become nirmal, the more we say, okay, you're everything to me, the more like, the way you're up to your speaking, right? The guru's heart fills up, the ustad's heart fills up, the, the teacher's heart fills up for just happiness for that student. You know, they they have something in their hands, whether that be experience, years of knowledge, you know, spirituality, whatever that may be, you know, I'm talking about like a physical teacher, normal teacher could be, to a spiritual ustad, to to the guru. They carry something that we do not carry, you know. When when we come into their sharan, you know, who knows how much things they are giving to us, how much ardasa they will do for us that yeah. we, we, we just cannot imagine. Yeah. And and before, you know, like any listeners at home take it the wrong way, if there is like an ustad or a teacher that is abusive or that is like not listening and things like that, of course, you know, there's nuances to the statement, but overall valuing knowledge. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, my my parents, the way they would treat books was nothing how we would at school. I remember at school one day, I was in elementary school, we figured out that we could uh, take the test book, textbooks, put them on the carpet, okay. put our feet on them and use them as skates. Oh! And so I came home and I did that. Oh my God. My mom grabbed my shirt, immediately pulled me to the side and was like, this is Vidya, this is knowledge. You do not put your feet on knowledge. Yeah. And she picked it up and she put it to her forehead, a science book. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> she was like, on books and knowledge you must always respect them yeah. respect the books respect the knowledge respect the person that teaches you that knowledge yeah. and i remember sitting in class and having like a lot of the uh you know non i, mean, I was the only sick kid there but baki they you know they were like making noise and like playing around but i was like sitting there like this is an ustad like i have to give them respect you know and honestly i feel i'm better off for it but as I've learned about Sikhi coming into it recently, the more, to your point, the more respect that I feel like I give an Ustad to any teacher, a spiritual guide, anybody, they just, they go like a million miles more for you. Like the Prem that a Gursik has, whenever they're given Prem, they turn around, you, you give them a rice worth, they try to give you a mountain's worth. And that's when you start meeting real Gursiks, real Ustads. And your Guru is as real as they come. So learning to respect your Guru and not... It's okay to question, like we were saying. But question to learn, not question to challenge. Mm. There's a difference. So to your point, I've even heard people say, why does God need us to repeat his name? Why do we need to say, Vaiguru, Vaiguru? You know, why does he have such a need uh, for us um, to, to do that? Why should I be bound by the Guru's cage? Um, what do you say to that? Well, if you don't get bounded to the Guru's cage, whose cage will you be bounded to? You'll be bounded to, and someone said, no, I'm a free guy, I'm a free man, I do whatever I want. No, you're not free. You're bounded by your ego. At the end of the day, none of us are free. We're bounded by someone, something sitting deep inside 
that's been there for eons, for genoms and genoms, for a lifetime on top of a lifetime. You know, it's it's been sitting there like a monster. Because of that monster, we had to keep coming back over and over and over. and we praise that monster. We put him on our high stool. You say, look at me. Look how amazing I am. Look at the vidya I know. Look at the rakitan I can do. Look at the science I know. Look at the engineer I am. We put that monster on top and say, that's me. Mm. But that's not me. That is the cause of all the diseases and you know violence and wars and hatred and everything that's been on in our humanity. In, in, in humanity it's it's what attracts the depression the anxiety the pain of life duk suk dohe kapde dohe kapde these are the two clothes that you put on because you have me sitting there you're either dressing them up in happiness or dressing them up in pain yeah. and i feel like a a regular life you know you go through your happiness and you're up top and then you fall down to the bottom when you're in pain and then you rise up again and you fall down again and i feel like the guru's rasta when you fall at the guru sharan and when maharaj is giving you these hukmanami they're teaching you how to center out mm. how to see the kinsuk equivalently how instead of chasing happiness or pain you are now chasing peace mm. sada anand such a peace where you're always happy you're always in jardi gada and so these hukmanami you know back to what we were talking about they're very difficult to understand because you know just to kind of summarize one you have to limit your ego and the only way to do that is by falling at the feet of the guru and learning about nam simran about gyan gyan as in uh learning the vidya that it takes uh of understanding what maharaj is even saying how's the game set up what is sikhi even saying not just by reading a couple of lines you know oh you know banas ki jaat sab ek hi pehchanable and you know we kind of love putting that on banners and saying just see all human race as one um and then there's like this uh flyer that's going around mm-hmm. that says uh, it's like a quote from guru nanak dev ji that says don't be a hindu don't be a muslim be a human first oh um, <laughs> um I, it was never said you and i both know that you can go through gurbani yeah if you even know the theme of gurbani yeah. then you would know that guru nanak dev ji would never say that yeah i i get the power now they're coming from You know, their pavana is that like Maharaj is like Taram, Maharaj is Rasta is all about humanity, humanity, right? It's all about insaniyat. You know? Then I can I can vouch for that to say that yeah, you know what is Sikhi? Sikhi is humanity. Sikhi is insaniyat, right? But to put it in, in into like a, a few lines and be like Guru Nanak Dev Ji said these exact lines, you know that that wouldn't be correct necessarily, you know. And I think that takes away from the larger message of. of sikhi you know it, it kind of like it trying to strip it away from a deeper message and deeper values uh by putting something that someone someone else wrote and saying that the guru wrote it you know it's it's, it's impersonating the guru you know in a way right? yeah. it's uh, it's identity theft <laughs> it's identity <laughs> theft uh, i i uh, i pulled up by gurdas ji the amara and uh on the 33rd vaad uh they have um a discussion with the qazis and in that discussion um they ask guru nanak dev ji they say puchan phol kitab no hindu vadda ke musliman ne hoi musliman hoi musliman hoi um and uh, so they ask guru nanak dev ji they say what's what's bigger hmm. a hindu or a musliman what does your book say yeah. you know because they're assuming that he's learning from somewhere <laughs> baba akhe so guru nanak dev ji replies hajiya sub amla bajho dono roi What does that mean? Uh to me? Yeah. Well, when when Guru Nanak Dev Ji mean the hadiyan, you know, the, the, the one main thing to understand is the context of that shabad because it's like a bunch of yatras uh, yatris came together from the western country to be like let's go to Amritsar, yatra kan jaye. It's such a huge aspiration for us probably living our whole life waiting for this moment. that we all got months off now a month off to go to india go together as brothers and sisters to do darshan amar amar so beautiful right and then along the way you meet guru nanak dev ji <laughs> right that's <laughs> like i got popped the bubble here <laughs> kind of thing because it, we're going although you know it's very beautiful and everything's there but 
sometimes, not this, this might not apply to everyone, but sometimes the the ego is still being there, you know, like as the bad boy, you know, sitting somewhere deep within us. That after we do the yatra, we were like, we went to Amritsar, you know, we got all our pops removed. You didn't like, kind of like, you know. So I think maybe Guru Sahib is speaking to them from that kind of angle. So when when they ask Mara, is like. Uh, they see that, like Pai Gadashi describes Guru Nanak Ji as having a poti in the in in this area over here, and uh, and having us on their hand, you know, a, a stick in their hand, you know, that's how Maharaj is walking, and so they're they're looking at the the poti and they're like, what's in your book, you know, tell us who will get through Muslim or Hindu. And see again, that, that's like there's a, that's the ego that's asking that question. Yes, it's not the question like by Nanla Ji asks about what's your rupe. That's not that's not an ego. That's outside of ego, right? Or that's that's. On the mer- that's on the verge of merging with the divine. Like that question is is a question that one would ask on the verge of merging with the divine, or either right. merged already asking for us. But right. this question, would the Muslims get in or the Hindus get in? Is totally in ignorance. It's totally in hanka. It's totally in homi. Right? Yeah. It's like a sick, you know, going on the yatra of Hanuman and missing the point. <laughs> you know that yeah. the four doors are representing everyone. And so it's like it's like them. So many years have passed, like a thousand, two thousand years have passed for the Makkah to be built and a Hajj to be going on, traditional Hajj to be going on, and they they lost the point of humanity. They just think it's Islam only. And Christians think it's a Christian only, right? And so that question is a, is 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 just acts from that point of view, you know. And the Guru Gurus have saying, you know, Shubh Abla Baju Dona Rohi kind of thing is Amal literally means Rat. It literally means kardar. It means character, you know. How is how is your character? How do you maintain your your yourself from day to day? You know, shub pure, you know. Pure means khalsa. Is your rat like the khalsa? You know, I think that guru is kind of like hinting out there, right? I mean, the shub amal could literally mean like khalsa rat for a sick today, you know. Don't know roi. Okay, without 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 the character, without the characteristics, without the path, walking on the path of pureness. We will both cry, you know. So it doesn't doesn't just only sometimes like I think we 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 transitions maybe or, or sometimes we say that it just means good actions. It's it's a lot more than that I would say. And so that's exactly it, right? So we 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 talked about this poster, and then we talked about this conversation in the Gazis. The English translation of that will just be oh, it's good actions. So then we take the uh, we take a. English translations, yeah. we pull the moral of Gurbani out of Pai Gurdashi the Anvara and we water it down to it doesn't matter if you're a Hindu or Muslim, yeah. it just matters that your actions are good. Yeah. Even though it missed the entire context yeah. of what was actually being said. It yeah. also missed the real definition yeah. um, of of what Bani is saying. You know, that's like saying the the translation of Ik Uun God is one God. Yeah. That's not true. Yeah. It's so much deeper. There's so much more nuances into it. And I think that's what you were about to jump into earlier. And I'd love to hear about that is oftentimes the reason we also feel so terrified of Hukumaname is because one, the philosophy of Gurbani we're taking from English translations. And then number two, the answers of Hukumaname we're taking from, okay, this is what Guru Sahib is saying. And sometimes I've, um, I, I don't have examples in front of me right now, but sometimes I've even read uh, Hukumaname where I'm, where I look at the English definition, and I go, yeah, that's not what that's saying at all. Like this is this is incorrect. And then I have to open up the other DK to figure out what Maharaj is saying. Mm. I think what it is is that Gurbani is not meant to be an ancient or alien language. It has become like that to now to us now because we don't put the time and effort to to take that course, learn the vocabulary. The different accents, the different dialects, we we just don't we just don't have the we just don't invest into it basically. Right. Without investing into something, you'll never you'll never get to get the true value of what it is. You know, whether it's Gurbani, whether it's something else, right? You have to invest your time and energy into it. That that's the only way it can give back to you. It could give fruits to you. When we look at Gurbani, it's the same procedure. What gurus have wrote those shabats directed to whoever they're talking to is speaking to a language that those people would have understood you know for example Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj because we were talking about the Hajj Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj when they, when they go to Arab Desh Arabia um, and they go to Makkah which is uh, a city which has the Kaaba in, within that city 
So Mecca is a city, and it has the the place of pilgrim pilgrimage that all the Muslims go to, right, to do Hajj, um, the Kaaba. When they went to the Kaaba, Guru Sahib said a shabad that they would understand. You know, the shabad was yak arz guftam pesh to dargos kun kartar hakka hakka pakka kapir tu beab parvatkar. The word ab comes there. Beab. Why Guru Ji's beab, right? Dunya mukam me fani dehtiq dehkiq dil dani. So, so they go on. But the thing is that we would understand the shabad today because we haven't invested our time to learn Farsi Arabi. Now, a Sikh has a really big responsibility. On top of the Pachadiks, have a huge responsibility. What it is is that Gurbani uh, Guru Sahib was speaking to one person at that time, or a group of individuals from one background, and then another Shabbat they're speaking to, let's say, Murathi, right? Or they're speaking Lendi Punjabi. They're speaking to. They're speaking so many different languages to so different people. The Pachadik today. The Sikh today has to learn all those different languages. On top of that, the different context, the situation, political uh, settings as well, economical settings at that time period to understand what the hukunam is. Right. So much goes into it, but like you were saying, we just shake the ball and we're like, give me an answer. We say, yes or no? Yes or no? Is this the boy I should marry? Uh, is this the girl I should be with? Yes or no? Should I take this job? Yeah. Yes or no? That's yeah. how we press good stuff. That's how we press good stuff. Yeah. Uh, to to a certain extent, you know, I I don't want to fully bash that either because yeah. I know I was there. One hundred percent, same. And I know that helped me through my college life. It helped me pick the right person in my life. You know, me and you were talking like even if we're gonna go on like vacation, yeah. we're we're like Maraj. Yeah, Maraj, because we're going. In, in, I want to. I if I want to go somewhere, whether that be for work or vacation, I want to ask Maraj. Maraj, this is in your hukum. Is is this something you would like me to do? Yeah, you know. If you like me to go on vacation, cool. If you don't want me, you're okay. That's your, you're my boss. <laughs> Agreed. So that perspective is one thing. Yeah. Right. It's okay to ask Maharaj everything. Yeah. But it's it's when you go with the expectation that if you don't answer in the way that I want it, yeah, then I'm gonna be heartbroken and guilt ridden, and I'm not gonna I'm gonna miss the message. Yeah. Uh, right, like you said, you said you're my maluk. If it's no, then it's no. There's no, no problem. I, I, um, I'm someone that loves business ideas. You know, I could sit there like chalkboarding a bunch of ideas, and I remember like I got really hyped on this idea once, and I like put in the work. I, I drafted a business plan, and I like put it all together. I even made phone calls of, yo, I'm thinking about launching this. What do you think? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I didn't take a hookah number from Madaj. Let me just take a hookah number from Madaj. Oh my God, bro! <laughs> I took a hukum nama, and the entire each talk was bashing me on greed. Each talk, and I was like, "Okay, I guess we're not doing this business." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, but why, Maharaj? Like, it could have helped people and made me money, right?" Yeah. And so I, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about, you know. So I read through that hukum nama, and I was like. Oh yeah, God no! <laughs> like this is not happening. You know, yeah. Maharaj, is, Maharaj does not want us to go this way. This, um, you know, I'm spending too much time focused on Maya. I need to focus on Nam Simran. I need to drop what I'm doing, right? And so it's like, it's like having a guide sit inside of you and go, I know where you're really thinking from. You don't even know where you're thinking from. Yeah. So drop this and focus. On this instead, yeah. and what this normally ends up being is an array of seva, nam, bani, sangat, santandi seva. You know, something along those lines. Um, so that's that. That's what's unique about Sikhi, right? So although you know we we keep bringing up this eight ball reference on a level, it is Maharaj when they give their guidance that you recognize, you know what this is. This is all going to work out. You know, I was really nervous about my wedding. And I uh, took a hukumanama, and Maharaj was like, uh, so the, the following day, there was a bunch of Gursikhs that were coming. And Maharaj was like, the Gursikhs are going to come and all your karma are going to go away. Anything you're worried about. And so all of a sudden, you know, I was more excited about the Gursikhs showing up. And the anxieties of getting married and all that type of stuff went away. Hmm. So it was like, it's like Maharaj holds you in their arms like a baby. Hmm. And tells you like, oh, look at this toy. Look at this instead. Like, focus on this, you know. And and it's like having a having God be your therapist. Mm. 
and guide you through life. So yeah, on a level, you know, there there is a lot of conversations that I have just between the guru and I. Mm-hmm. If I've had a long day at work, I'll go straight to the gurdwara. I just be like, Maharaj, I'm in your sharan. I just I don't even know what to ask for, but I'm feeling so beat up. You know, what are some of the some of the things that you've like some experiences with hukum name? Um <laughs> well in the beginning they were quite like you would you would say you know like um well i think i had this sanskar in me that even if i would ask for something crazy and mari would say no to it that i would be like all right they know best yeah, yeah. And, and like to be honest like there will be there will be some things that i'll like you know come at it see us with lena my ego was in fully broke i'm not it's not broken now either but like at that time it was just getting into it you know so 6 7 months later i was like hmm let's let's see if I, it's now this is something i can explore right i can like explore it before let me see if i can explore it now and so sometimes i did bypass no can i you know i said don't do it i still did it a few months later you know kind of thing waited for the feelings to go away and just kind of i winked at it and the nitija the result was always bad you know the result but i learned so much from that that i think that's the only reason i have so much faith in hukuma now is because i rebelled in some like a kid does rebel against their parents right yeah. and when they when they fall they learn and they're just like you know what my parents were right punjabi ch kahawat hai ki machhi patthar chat ke mod diya which means you can't convince a fish that there's land ahead until it hits its head on that rock <laughs> and then and then it goes back and that's that's us kids You know we do rebel we do go against like hukumnami and things like that but then we learn then we learn <laughs> For me it's been the opposite okay I was so scared to rebel and but then I'd be like there's no way there's no way things are going to work out you keep saying things are going to work out there's no way mm. right and then I watch things unfold and cuz I'm I'm someone that overthinks okay right you give me a problem and I I start thinking about like 100 different outcomes yeah right and i start getting afraid of that or you know start trying to figure out solutions for it and so when a hokum drama comes i start sitting there and i start going how are you going to solve this mm. there's no way right and uh there eat special hokum drama where maraj goes sit back and do nothing those are the hardest yeah because the world will keep telling you why aren't you doing anything about this go do something yeah you're like oh, i'm sorry my guru told me to sit back and yeah. not do anything so this is what i'm going to be doing now for for me like i the, one of the biggest ones the biggest uh, struggles we had was uh, for marriage you know like me and singni we we knew each other three about three years before we got married and um for for us it was hokunami and i returned you know yeah. um hokunami at, at when our parents introduced the thought hokunami when the parents started backing yell because of caste hokunami when we were we didn't know what to do you know like uh, do we hold on to this do we not hold on to it? what do we do we're, we're stuck in the middle now and um there is many times my mind was like wait just wait you know and it tested us to the point of, like to the brink of death like it was just like you're barely holding on you don't know what to do anymore it's you know years are going weeks are turning to months months turn to years and we were just waiting we're waiting we're waiting for a miracle to happen you know and uh, When, when that miracle does happen though it's just like wow like it's mind blowing mind blowing those three years were the hardest three years in my life Ricky I wow. know that yeah, I was, it was it was the hardest but I came out of there uh bang on knock on wood like as a son quote quote like yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I'll like alright that's it Not, I don't know if anything else can like like I'll get knock on wood my is bukshlo much while watching this podcast like I got something coming for this guy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? but like it just feels like after you come out of that you come out as a warrior you know you like my yeah. just broke you down broke you down and little did you know he's building a mansion you know he, he's he's breaking out a chompri You think your jump party is so nice and it's warm and it's, he's like I got something better for you. You know. And I got to build you into it. I got to build you into it. So all of a sudden those years of like saying, "Oh my god, like where's my guru? Where's my guru?" Yeah. Right? We through these hukum and I'm just telling you what to do. Yeah. And on the other end of it when you see it all happen, you go, "Oh my god, you're actually not just a book." Yeah. You're a jagdi jyot. Jagdi jyot. And I say this often, I go, you know, it's really funny People will go I wish I could have seen you know the gurus when they were actually here mm. not just their writing. Mm. I'm like guru sahib is actually here. 
<laughs> right? Like you have to understand though. Yeah. Guru Hargobind Pacha was 12. Hmm. When he got on stage, not on stage, but like in front of the entire Sangat. Yeah. And he said, from now on, I only want Kode and Shasars. Yeah. I'm going to put a ring through Chandu's nose and I'm going to drag him through the streets of Lahore. Yeah. He was 12 when he said that. And the Sangat there was like, uh, I think we may have made the wrong guru. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to Mataji and they're saying, it's a kid. Right? You've got Guru Har Krishna Pacha, a kid. You've got... Guru Gobind Singh Ji, a child again. Yeah. Over and over again, path shahi are given to to such in, in such a way where everybody else goes, this can't be the guru. This can't be the guru. Yeah. How can I listen to a kid? Yeah. How can I listen to a teenager? Yeah. And then Guru Gobind Singh Ji, after Chamkor Di Gadi, after Machi Wada Jungle, you get Sangatan saying things like, Jeda, uh, the guy that couldn't handle his own, own uh, kingdom, you think he's going to give us mukti? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And now the test in front of us is, Maharaj said, okay, I've said what I needed to say. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take the roop of a granth. The same way before I took the roop of a push, of a person. Hmm. Now I'm going to take the roop of a granth hmm. and let's see how many of you think I am just a book and how many of you realize I'm the Jagdi Jot. I'm sitting right there. Aung wow. Sang Sahai. And at any point I can speak with you. I can have a conversation with you. Right? And obviously we have Shri Dasam Grant and we have Shri Sarblo Grant as well. But to put it into less words, there was somebody that wrote a book to Sanjanal Singh Ji about why Dasam Grant is not Gurbani, is not Guru Gobind Singh Ji's Gurbani and handed it to Sanjanal Singh Ji. And Sanjanal Singh Ji read through the book and in the end, he flipped to the back cover and he wrote down Sur Beer Yodhyanda Grant Bujdil Kair Kadini Jan Sakde. A warrior's grunt can never be understood by someone that is a coward. Signed it and handed it back. <laughs> and so, so yeah, you know, uh, at places like Hazur Saab and Patna Saab, and, and we can go into this on, on, a, on a different talk, they take Hukumaname out of Shiri Dasam Grant as well. Yeah. Right? And that's more of a hukum to a warrior. Hmm. Right? The Khalsa. But Guru Granth Saab Ji is open for everyone. I had a Catholic friend of mine when I told him what Hukumaname are. He goes, can I, can I take one? Hmm. You're telling me I can speak to God? And I goes, yeah. Guru Granth Sahib Ji is not just for six. It's for the entire, Maharaj is there for the, Maharaj, the king of kings, God. It's God sitting there. God isn't the six. God belongs to everyone, right? So I was like, of course, man. Like, I'll teach you how to take a hukumanama. Let's go do it. He takes the hukumanama, bro. He breaks down into tears. Wow. He goes, this is exactly what I was looking for. Obviously, he stayed a Catholic, which is good. A Sikh isn't trying to convert anybody. But he found the answer he was looking for. He said he felt like it was exactly what he needed to hear about his relationship with Jesus. That's a hukumnama, man. That's Guru Sab having a conversation with you at any given moment. So as we wrap up, um, how do you take a hukumnama? What are the... How should you take a hukumnama? What is the, the proper steps? Um, washing your hands, the mariyadda behind it, all, all that kind of stuff. Because obviously you want to be respectful of Guru Granth Sahib Pacha as well. You don't want to like be taking your socks off, have your hands dirty and walk up there with, you know. Yeah. Uh, so so what's what's a proper way of taking a hukumnama? Traditionally, um, you know, the, 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 rat, the rat or the procedure that we have in place is that a Sikh will ideally go to a Granthi Singh and be like, I want to take a hukunama. You know, can you uh, please do the... It, and this is saying that if the Sikh is a Gristi, doesn't really know much about how to do Ardas, how to view Gurbani, they can have an intermediate there, you know. Uh, and the, the Granthi Singh will do the Ardas for the Sikh, uh, get on top there, read the hukunama, and then hopefully explain the hukunama to the Sikh as well. So that's that's for someone, let's say, who's who stepped into the Gurdwara for the first time maybe, or on a Sunday, or like, they don't know much, right? Right. For someone who, who knows to do Ardas, who knows to read Gurmukhi, who knows how to uh, maybe even pull up the Gurmukhi on their phone, they can do it themselves. You know, if they have Marj Srupa at home, whereas a Poti, a Panjgranthi, a Das, you know, in, we have history to back this up that a Sikh would take a Hukanama from any Poti they had. For example, Paitaro right. Singh Ji in Pant Prakash is written, when right. they're going to, uh, they're making a plan with the little things that they have, a few things they had, were to either leave 
the the chase that the the, the enemy was after them. The either right. either they'll leave that chase, uh, come back to fight another day, or they'll fight now and, or they'll fight now and uh, give shahidiyah now. Yeah. And Paitaru Singh is says in history that they had a daskanti in their kamar kasa. Daskanti is Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj's Guru Bani. Right? They took up the daskanti in the first shabad they read. You know that was like go to the battlefield and juj ke shidi pao. Wahiru. You know? Wow. You know, and so they they took that as a hook number. They're like, alright, single, we're not going home. Kalwa talwara kadiya and then juj ke, you know, soon me shidiya paiya or any. So say that so now, so that level of spear, if you can read Guru Mukhi, you can hopefully understand it, or you can pull it up in your phone. Then if you have a poti at home, you know, a, a decent size poti, maybe the first bag of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, like the first half, you can say, right? Or Guru Granth Sahib Ji themselves, or if you don't have anything going to the Gurdwara, again, that's not, that's not a traditional path of taking Hukunami. Yes. Today, we have a lot of apps as well. For example, Sikhnet as the Hukunama app uh, that I personally use, because sometimes you're in situations where you might not be like on the road, as per Jalik, we're on the road a lot to me. We might not have the convenience of taking traditional hukalami. Yes. Know? So what Das does, and this this is again, this is not traditional, so it's not something that we can, uh, uh, I, I can, you know, say that this is 100%, you do it. It's up to you if you find this method uh, approachable. I personally do. Uh, and I've, this is how I've interacted with hukalami for the majority of my life, you know, is on the phone, uh, do a das, you know, this is my question. This is my situation. I don't, I'm not going to give Maharaj. Uh, I don't I try not to give Maharaj a, um, a scenario like, you know, should I, should I not? Is this or is this not? Sometimes that, that does happen. But often I'll be like, Maharaj, and so whatever the hukka number comes, you know, I'll, I'll tend to look for signs. For example, I'll give you such a simple situation, right? There's a Kirtan program happening, there's a Katha program happening, right? Um, if I'll see Kirtan in the Hukunama, oh yeah, I'll go to the Kirtan program. i see Katha in the Hukunama, I'll go to the Katha program. Like, and just give me a very simple example, probably never happened in my life, but <laughs> just kind of like, you know. So I think that'll be the procedure on doing a non-traditional Hukunama uh, in the modern era. Okay. Um, I, I also want to add on to that. I think that um, if you are at the Gurdwara, um, Having done Nishanan that morning, like if you know you're gonna go and take a Hukumnama on Maharaj Tabia, sure. take a Nishanan, wash your case, sit down. When you sit down, make sure you're wearing a Hazudia, your hands are washed, right? And after, obviously, we do an Ardas. After doing the Ardas to Maharaj, then you go. And, w- and when you're gonna uh, take the Hukumnama, if Maharaj is already Prakash, you take Maharaj's Angs from both sides. And then when you uh, come out for the hukam nama it, Maharaj will obviously open up to the ang that they wanted to open up on if it's the morning time then the top left correct and if it's the evening time then the bottom right um, so wherever the shabd begins multiple times a good way to find a shabd is uh, where the where there's multiple numbers mm. listed behind a pankti mm. is you know the the hukam mm. um, that's where the hukam is ending mm. now if you're new to this, then I think like what I would recommend is getting to like a camp. I think, um, you know, the camps that we do, especially the home camps, uh, imploring every single attendee to take a hukumanama has always been a hit. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves that because it's their first time being a, being able to actually sit with Guru Granth Sahib Ji and have a one-on-one conversation. So I think the more that we do that kind of stuff, the more um, Sangat will get to talk to Maharaj. But yeah, even myself, I personally use the uh, the personal Hukumanama app. Um, and I think you brought up very, something very interesting, which is now that you've taken it, now that you've understood what it means to, t- to take a Hukumanama, how to take a Hukumanama, the means that you can use to Hukumanama, how do you follow a Hukumanama? Oh. And uh, I think the first thing that I like to do is a binti to Maharaj. You are the one that gave me the Hukumnama. Now please show me the path to follow it. A good friend of mine, a Singh, he always says, if Maharaj says listen to Kirtan, listen to it now. Hmm. If it's Seva, go to the Gurdwara now. Hmm. You know, and that's something I picked up from him where, you know, it's not like one of those afterthoughts. Hmm. Like if Maharaj says Nam Japo, it's not like, yeah, you know what? I do need to add more Nam Simran into my life. No, right now. Vaheguru, Vaheguru, Vaheguru. Don't delay. 
Yeah. Don't delay. Mana says, listen to more Kirtan. Cool. Throw in an AirPod. Open up SoundCloud. You know, find your Fire Rag Kirtan uh, playlist and hit shuffle and start listening. Yeah. You know? So it's one of those things where um, when Maraj does give a hukum, it, I think for me, uh, with the good six that I've had in my life that have, you know, shown me, you know, what needs to happen, it's always been do ardas ki Maraj hukum na mithe chalandi daat abakshio. Number two, follow exactly what Maraj is saying immediately without thinking about what it means. Right? And then number three, as you go about your days, I, I found this helpful. Keep opening that hukum nama back up. Mm. Keep reading it. Think about what it means. Mm. What does it mean for your life? How are things unfolding? Because sometimes Maharaj tells you the future. Mm. And as the future is happening and you read the hukum nama, you're like, oh, that was meant for this moment. Now I need to do this. Mm. Right? And, and that's the cool thing about talking to God is you have access to past, present, and future. <laughs> Um, what do you think? Understanding, uh, walking on the hukum nama. I think it's beautiful. Um, I also I will also uh, add into there that sometimes that um, words like nam, gurbani, kirtan, katha, they're very universally applied. Uh, they can be universally applied. For example, katha can mean kirtan and kirtan can mean katha. Ah, <laughs> that makes sense. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Seva can mean job and job can mean seva. Because at the end of the day, all these things are interconnected, you know. Um, there is katha in kirtan there is kirtan in katha right there is uh, there is seva in jap and there is jap in seva it's, it's it's actually all the same you know it's just we we kind of categorize it but that's okay in the, in the very beginning you need to categorize it you need to find out wh- which field you fit into but eventually they kind of become intertwined you know for a sake so um, I, I think it's beautiful how you said that uh, do it now you know do it today you know like, don't wait till tomorrow don't wait till the next moment right because you never know when your mind will change you know uh, this mind sometimes takes you so high you know sometimes, sometimes it just says you know what today like you were, we're beginning we began off by saying I want to do sukmani sabs I want to do this today I want to and then kabhu jaye payalli and then sometimes his mind just goes all the way to empty bottoms where you're just like, I don't want to do anything today. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're a dean to this mind. We're, we're like, you know, we said it before, is we're in the pinjara of this mind. The mind says we do. You know, it, it is one point in Dasam Gurbani, Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj says that the mind is my guru. <laughs> mind is my guru. Why? Because I have to... If the guru the says go to the guru, like you guys went to the guru ka today, the mind said it, right? Like the mind is like, all right, or even if Imaj gives us a hook, and I'm like, first check in with our mind. Mind is like, yeah, all right, let's do this. Let's not do it, right? The more we train that mind to say yes to the hukanam, and that can only come the way you said it is a certain like uh, muscle memory. Mind said it, do it right now, you know? This is the katha, the katha which says, ke naam di ga right away just say, vai guru, vai guru, listening. Kirtan which naam di ga lari, vai guru, vai guru. Get your surti in there, you know? Get your surti absorbed there all times. Vai guru. Mm. And to that point, don't be afraid of your guru. Yeah. How blessed are you? You're blessed just fact on the fact that you know who the guru is. Vai guru. Just the fact that you can even know what a hukum nama is, being able to walk up to Guru Sahib, mm. matha taking to Guru Sahib, it's okay. Stop thinking you're a bad sick. Yeah. You know, this is the first time in our history that we have been displaced from our roots. Yeah. We're in the diaspora now. We're in other cultures. Mm. We're, we're growing up American, Canadian, English. So obviously, it's going to be really tough balancing that eastern culture that western culture and then like you know knowing that you're making mistakes and because of those mistakes you're taking steps away from the guru no guru sab guru sab would consult and help people that were eating literally carnivores like they would eat other people yeah you know they would kill other people yeah. there was people that were dakus there were people that were chores there were i mean every type of person and even in Gurbani, it says, Maharaj, you're someone that saves demons, beasts, rakshas. You're someone that can make a rock float. So I got a binti, just save me too. Yeah. Have the humility to know that the Guru does not hate you. <laughs> Regardless of the mistakes you've made. Yeah, he's nirpo and nirvad, right? Nirvad means kisna vad ni karta. Vad to rata. He can't be your enemy, 
right? That is, so what is he? He's your friend. Right? Yeah. And he, he can only actually be your friend if we create that relationship with that being, you know? You can't fall in love with someone you don't know. G. You have to take the time to actually, you know, I'm going to say this and, you know, don't hang me for it, but you have to date the guru. And what I mean by date the guru is, oh no, uh, what I mean by that is, you know, uh, you have to listen to their sakya, get to know them, sit down with them, you know, hear them. Because at the end of the day, I want to be the bride of my guru. Ji. I want to be his wife. Ji. Of a Kaal Puruks, you know, this is how it says it in Barney as well. And so when you're falling into that love, it's like constantly like, who were you? How do I fall in love with someone I don't know? Ji. But one of the things is you can say like, hey, I heard you're God. Uh, I'm going through this thing. Do you have any, do you have any advice? The same way we ask a best friend, a mother, a father, you know, our, our brothers and sisters. Yeah. We turn to Maharaj and we say, you're my Mata, you're my Pitta, you're my best friend. You're my Sahai. Yeah. Jithe har aradiye, jithe har mit Sahai. That that friend, mit means mitter. You know that wherever you remember him, that friend will come and save you. you know? Why? Jithe bhi If we could be in hell, we can be in heaven. We can be in, in between, wherever we might be. Be. If we remember that Creator, remember that Pramatma, Prameshwar, Vahiguruji, that moment they come and rescue us. Bhai Sahib Ji, very good. Very good. Really enjoy talking to you, and uh, uh, we we'll hope to see you in the next one. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Vijay. Bye, Guruji. Bye, Guruji. Ka Kalsa. Bye, Guruji. Ki Fateh. सेवा दे पुंज प्रोफेसर पूरन सिंह इक थाई लिख देने अमृतसर सरोवर दी परिक्रमा करन वेले स्लैबा उते संभल संभल कदम रखो हर एक स्लैब हेठा सैकड़े शहीद सिंगा दे सिर ने दरबार साहिब दी दर्शनी ड्यूटी लंगदिया जो शरीर नु सुन चढ़दी है ए ओसे दा इशारा है तीजे कल्लू कारे दी शुरुआत 1 जून नु बजदी है ते 6 जून तक दे काले दिन तक कपड़दियां लहू दियां तारा ते शहीद सिंगा दे जिस्मा दे टोटी दिल्ली दरबार दे तख्त दे पावे हेठ चिने हुए महसूस हो जांदे ने जून 1984 विच ਭਾਰਤ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਅੰਮ੍ਰਿਤਸਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੇ ਕਰਵਾਏ ਭਾਰਤੀ ਫੌਜ ਦੇ ਹਮਲੇ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਲੂ ਸਟਾਰ ਯਾਨੀ ਕਿ ਸਾਕਾ ਨੀਲਾ ਤਾਰਾ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਪਰ ਸਿੱਖ ਇਹ ਨੂੰ ਤੀਸਰਾ ਘੱਲੂ ਘਾਰਾ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਇਸੇ ਹਮਲੇ ਦਾ ਬਦਲਾ ਲੈਣ ਲਈ ਭਾਈ ਬਿਆਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਭਾਈ ਕਿਹਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਤਤਕਾਲੀ ਪ੍ਰਧਾਨ ਮੰਤਰੀ ਇੰਦਰਾ ਗਾਂਧੀ ਤੋਂ ਬਦਲਾ ਲੈਣ ਦੀ ਯੋਜਨਾ ਬਣਾਈ ਤੇ ਕੁਝ ਮਹੀਨਿਆਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਹੀ 31 ਅਕਤੂਬਰ 1984 ਨੂੰ ਬਿਅੰਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਅਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਾਥੀ ਭਾਈ ਸਤਵੰਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਤਤਕਾਲੀ ਪੀਐਮ ਇੰਦਰਾ ਗਾਂਧੀ ਦਾ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਮਾਰ ਕੇ ਕਤਲ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਹੀ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਕਤਲੇਆਮ ਦੇ ਖੂਨ ਨਾਲ ਰੰਗੀ ਗਈ ਇੰਜ 84 ਦੇ ਕਤਲੇਆਮ ਦਾ ਦੌਰ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੇ ਹੋਈ ਹਮਲੇ ਨਾਲ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੀ जून 1984 ਦੀ 39ਵੀਂ ਬਰਸੀ 6 ਜੂਨ ਨੂੰ ਹਰ ਵਾਰ ਦੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਵਿਖੇ ਮਨਾਈ ਜਾਵੇਗੀ 6 ਜੂਨ ਤੱਕ ਸਿੱਖ ਕੌਮ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਕੱਲੂ ਘਰ ਨੂੰ ਸਮਰਪਿਤ ਸ਼ਹੀਦੀ ਸਮਾਗਮ ਵੱਖ-ਵੱਖ ਥਾਵਾਂ ਉੱਤੇ ਕਰਵਾਏ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਪਰ ਮੁੱਖ ਸਮਾਗਮ 6 ਜੂਨ ਨੂੰ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਵਿਖੇ ਹੀ ਹੋਵੇਗਾ ਉਸ ਦਿਨ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਪਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਭੋਗ ਪਾਏ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਅਤੇ ਗੁਰਮਤ ਸਮਾਗਮ ਕਰਵਾਏ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਵੱਖ-ਵੱਖ ਪੰਥਕ ਸ਼ਖਸੀਅਤਾਂ ਇਸ ਮੌਕੇ ਸੰਗਤ ਨੂੰ ਸੰਬੋਧਨ ਕਰਨਗੀਆਂ ਇਸ ਮੌਕੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਕਾਰਜਕਾਰੀ ਜਥੇਦਾਰ ਗਿਆਨੀ ਹਰਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਿੱਖ ਕੌਮ ਦੇ ਨਾਂ ਸੰਦੇਸ਼ ਵੀ ਜਾਰੀ ਕਰਨਗੇ ਤੇ ਅੱਜ ਉਸ ਤਸ਼ੱਦਦ ਭਰੇ ਦਿਨ ਦਾ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਦਿਨ ਹੈ 1 ਜੂਨ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਅਤੇ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੇ ਹੋਏ ਫੌਜੀ ਹਮਲੇ ਦਾ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਦਿਨ ਸੀ ਭਾਰਤੀ ਫੌਜ ਨੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਕੰਪਲੈਕਸ ਨੂੰ ਘੇਰ ਲਿਆ ਸੀ ਚਸ਼ਮਦੀਦਾ ਮੁਤਾਬਕ ਫੌਜ ਦੀ ਗੋਲੀ ਦੁਪਹਿਰ 12:30 ਵਜੇ ਤੋਂ ਰਾਤ 8:00 ਵਜੇ ਤੱਕ ਲਗਾਤਾਰ ਕੰਪਲੈਕਸ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਚੱਲਦੀ ਰਹੀ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਦਿਨ ਅੰਦਰੋਂ ਕੋਈ ਫਾਇਰਿੰਗ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਈ ਸੀ ਇਸ ਗੋਲੀਬਾਰੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੀ ਸ਼ਹੀਦੀ ਹੋਈ ਸੀ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਭਾਈ ਮਹਿੰਗਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਬੱਬਰ ਸੀ
ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਅੰਤਿਮ ਸੰਸਕਾਰ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਕੰਪਲੈਕਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਸੀ ਇਸ ਦਿਨ ਪੂਰੇ ਸ਼ਹਿਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਰਫਿਊ ਲਗਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਲਈ ਖੋਫ ਦੇ ਦਿਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂਆਤ ਇਸ ਦਿਨ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਅੱਜ ਐਜੀਪੀਸੀ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਤੀਜੇ ਕਲੂਕਾਰੇ ਦੇ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਦਿਨ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਹੋਏ ਭਾਈ ਮਹਿੰਗਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਬੱਬਰ ਨੂੰ ਸ਼ਰਧਾਂਜਲੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਗਈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਯਾਦ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਮਾਗਮ ਕਰਵਾਏ ਗਏ ਬਿਊਰੋ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਦਾ ਖਾਲਸ ਟੀਵੀ due to the lawlessness in punjab we have been forced to go on strike there our business demands peace but here is no peace all round there is terrorism and there is a rule of jungle we
कोई भी ऐसा हिस्सा नहीं जिथे गोलियां के निशान ने गोलियां छान निशान निकलना नहीं हुई और मैं समझना इस सरकार की सोच ही समझ ही रहा है सिखा खत्म करने की इरादे जड़े ने वो नंगे हो गए हैं I think that the government has proved that he want to finish the Sikh community, he want to demolish the Sikh communities as well as he, which he does yesterday by the attack, by the firing on the all side down the Golden Temple and all the complex inside the complex building. <laughs> ਮੁਗਲ ਰਾਜ ਤੇ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਰਾਜ ਦੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਪਾਪ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਰਾਜ ਵਾਲੇ ਨੇ ਮਾਫ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜੋ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੇ ਹਮਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਹੋਰ ਜੋਰ ਅਪੀਲ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇਹਦਾ ਮੂੰਹ ਤੋੜ ਮੈਂ ਜਵਾਬ ਦੇਣ ਕਮ ਇਹ ਵਾਲ ਕਮਰ ਕਾ ਸੈਨਾ ਕਰਨ ਕਮਰ ਕਾ ਸੈਨਾ ਕਰਕੇ ਤੋਰਨ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਇਹ ਦੋ ਹੋਰ ਕੋਈ ਵੱਡੀ ਗੁਲਾਮੀ ਦੀ ਨਿਸ਼ਾਨੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋ ਸਕਦੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੁਣ ਪਾਪ ਹੋਇਆ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਫਾਈਂਡ ਐਨੀਥਿੰਗ ਮੋਰ ਪ੍ਰੂਵਡ ਦੈਨ ਦਾ ਇੰਡੀਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਸਲੇਵਰੀ ਅਪਾਨ ਦਾ ਸਿੱਖ ਵਾਟ ਹੈਵ ਹੈਪਨਡ ਯੈਸਟਰਡੇ ਆਪਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਲੂ ਸਟਾਰ ਦਾ ਦੂਜਾ ਦਿਨ ਯਾਨੀ ਕਿ 2 ਜੂਨ 1984 2 ਜੂਨ 1984 ਦਾ ਕੀ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਇਸ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਾਣਾਂਗੇ ਪਹਿਲੋਂ ਦੇਖ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਫੇਰ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਰੀਐਕਸ਼ਨ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਛੋਟੀ ਜੀ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਵੀਰਾਂ ਪੈਨਾ ਭਰਾਵਾਂ ਨੇ ਚੈਨਲ ਸਬਸਕ੍ਰਾਈਬ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਾਈਂਡਲੀ ਚੈਨਲ ਨੂੰ ਸਬਸਕ੍ਰਾਈਬ ਕਰ ਦਿਓ ਔਰ ਬੈਲ ਆਈਕਨ ਦੇ ਬਟਨ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ ਕਰ ਦਿਓ ਚਲੋ ਜੀ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਗੋ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਜੂਨ 1984 ਦਾ ਕੱਲੂ ਘਰ ਦੇਸ਼ਾਂ ਵਿਦੇਸ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਿੱਖ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਬੜੇ ਪਿਆਰ ਤੇ ਸ਼ਰਧਾ ਨਾਲ ਮਨਾ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਹਨ 1 ਜੂਨ ਦਾ ਜੋ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਕੱਲ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਸਰਵਣ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਸਰਵਣ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ 12:30 ਵਜੇ ਦੁਪਹਿਰ ਤੋਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਸ਼ਾਮ 8:00 ਵਜੇ ਤੱਕ ਫੌਜ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਗੋਲੀਬਾਰੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈ ਸੀ 
ਉਹ ਵੇਖਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਸਨ ਵੀ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਸੰਤ ਗਿਆਨੀ ਜਾਂ ਨੈਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇਧਰ ਪੋਗ ਲੋਕ ਨੇ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਦਾ ਖੜਾਕ ਸੁਣ ਕੇ ਬਾਹਰ ਆ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਤੇ ਹੱਥ ਖੜੇ ਕਰਕੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਕਹਿਣਗੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਮਾਫ ਕਰ ਦਿਓ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਇੱਕ ਭੁਲੇਖਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਦੂਰ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਨਾਲ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਵੇਖਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਸਨ ਵੀ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਚਲਾਉਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਕੁ ਜਾਣੇ ਨੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਤੇ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਕਿਹੋ ਜਿਹੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਮੋਰਚਾ ਬੰਦੀ ਕਿਹੋ ਜਿਹੀ ਹੈ ਜਿੱਥੋਂ ਇਹ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਚਲਾਉਣਗੇ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਮੌਜੂਦ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੀ ਰਣਨੀਤੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਨੂੰ 8 ਵਜੇ ਤੱਕ ਸਾਰੀ ਫੇਲ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਅਗਲੀ ਰਣਨੀਤੀ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇਹ ਹੋਰ ਮੀਟਿੰਗਾਂ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤਿਆਰ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਸਨ ਰਾਤ ਬਤੀਤ ਹੋਈ ਸਵੇਰੇ 2 ਜੂਨ ਦਾ ਅੰਮ੍ਰਿਤ ਵੇਲਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਹਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਗੁਰੂ ਮਾਰਗ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰਕਾਸ਼ ਹੋਇਆ ਕੀਰਤਨ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਨੇ ਹਾਜ਼ਰੀਆਂ ਭਰਨੀਆਂ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤੀਆਂ ਇਹ ਲੋਕ ਵੀ ਵੇਖ ਕੇ ਹੈਰਾਨ ਸਨ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਸਿੱਖ ਲੋਕ ਕਿਹੋ ਜੀ ਮਿੱਟੀ ਦੇ ਬਣੇ ਨੇ ਕੱਲ ਇੰਨੀਆਂ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਖੜਾਕ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਵੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਡਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਜੇ ਫੇਰ ਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਬਲੂ ਸਟਾਰ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਸਨ ਪਰ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਗੁਰੂ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਪ੍ਰੇਮ ਤੇ ਤੜਫ ਰੱਖਦੇ ਨੇ ਕੱਲ ਇੱਕ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੌਜਵਾਨ ਨੇ ਸਵਾਲ ਪੁੱਛਿਆ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਬਲੂ ਸਟਾਰ ਕਿਉਂ ਆਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਬਲੂ ਸਟਾਰ ਆਪਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਲੂ ਸਟਾਰ ਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਹੈ ਨੀਲਾ ਤਾਰਾ ਨੀਲੇ ਤਾਰੇ ਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਹੈ ਨੀਲੇ ਤੋਂ ਉਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਦੀ ਜਿੰਨੀ ਲੀਡਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਚ ਸੀ ਚਾਹੇ ਉਹ ਕਾਲੀ ਲੀਡਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਸੀ ਜਾਂ ਸੰਤ ਗਿਆਨੀ ਜੰਦਾਇ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਨ ਆਪ ਸਨ ਮਹਾਪੁਰਖ ਪੂਰੇ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੀਲੀਆਂ ਦਸਤਾਰਾਂ ਬੰਨਦੇ ਸਨ ਵੈਸੇ ਪੀਲੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਕੇਸਰੀ ਵੀ ਬੰਨੀਆਂ ਜਾਂਦੀਆਂ ਪਰ ਨੀਲੀਆਂ ਦਸਤਾਰਾਂ ਸਜਾਇਆ ਕਰਦੇ ਸਨ ਜਿਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਨੀਲੀਆਂ ਦਸਤਾਰਾਂ ਵਾਲੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਚੁੱਭਦੇ ਬੜੇ ਸਨ ਤੇ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਸਨ ਵੀ ਨੀਲੀਆਂ ਵਾਲੀਆਂ ਦਸਤਾਰਾਂ ਦਾ ਕਣ ਕਰ ਦਈਏ ਜਿਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਚਲਾਇਆ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਬਲੂ ਸਟਾਰ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੈ ਗੱਲ ਕਰੀਏ ਅੱਜ ਵਾਲੇ ਦਿਨ ਦੀ 2 ਜੂਨ ਦੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਵੀ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਾ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਕੱਲ ਹਮਲਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਦੂਰੋਂ ਨੇੜਿਓਂ ਚੱਲ ਕੇ ਮਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਗੁੱਸਾ ਤੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਤਾਂਗ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਪਹੁੰਚਣੀਆਂ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋ ਗਈਆਂ ਸਨ ਆਣ ਕੇ ਕੀ ਵੇਖਿਆ ਹੈ ਪ੍ਰਕਰਮਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਲੱਗੀਆਂ ਹੋਈਆਂ ਨੇ ਦੁਆਰਾਂ 'ਚ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਵੱਜੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਦਰਵਾਜ਼ਿਆਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਲੱਗੀਆਂ ਹੋਈਆਂ ਨੇ ਇਥੋਂ ਤੱਕ ਕਿ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰਲੇ ਸੁਨਹਿਰੀ ਗੁੰਮੜ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਨਿਸ਼ਾਨ ਸਨ ਜੋ ਕਿ 32 ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਇਹ ਸਭ ਕੁਝ ਵੇਖ ਕੇ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਦਾ ਹਿਰਦਾ ਛਲਣੀ ਛਲਣੀ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਸਥਾਨ ਤੋਂ ਸਰਬ ਸਾਂਝੀ ਵਾਰਤਾ ਦਾ ਉਪਦੇਸ਼ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਉੱਥੇ ਖੂਨ ਡੁੱਲਾ ਵਿਖਿਆ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਨੇ ਪਰਕਰਮਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੇ ਮੰਜੀ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਹਾਲ ਵਾਲੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਖੂਨ ਡੁੱਲਾ ਆਇਆ ਹੈ ਲੰਗਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਵਾਲੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਨਿਸ਼ਾਨ ਨੇ ਕਹਿਣ ਦਾ ਭਾਵ ਹਰ ਪਾਸੇ ਹੀ ਖੂਨ ਤੇ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਨਿਸ਼ਾਨ ਵੇਖਣ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲਦੇ ਨੇ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਨੇ ਪਰਕਰਮਾਂ ਦਾ ਇਸ਼ਨਾਨ ਕਰਾਇਆ ਦਰਸ਼ਨੀ ਡਿਊਲੀ ਦਾ ਇਸ਼ਨਾਨ ਕਰਾਇਆ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦਾ ਇਸ਼ਨਾਨ ਕਰਾਇਆ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੀ ਸੇਵਾ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਨੇ ਹੱਥੀਂ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਉਧਰੋਂ ਫੌਜ ਆਪਣੀ ਨੀਤੀ ਨੂੰ ਪੜਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਪਿੰਡਾਂ ਪਿੰਡਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੋਰ ਸਖਤਾਈ ਵਧਾਈ ਜਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ
ਵੀ ਇਹਦਾ ਜਵਾਬ ਮੂੰਹ ਤੋੜ ਜਵਾਬ ਦਿਓ ਕੱਲੇ ਕਮਰ ਕਸੇ ਹੀ ਨਾ ਕਰੋ ਕਮਰ ਕਸੇ ਕਰਕੇ ਤੁਰੋ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਮਹਾਪੁਰਖਾਂ ਦੀ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਆ ਵੀ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਨੈਟ ਤੇ ਸੁਣ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਜੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਪੱਤਰਕਾਰਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਹਾ ਸੀ ਸੰਤਾਂ ਨੇ ਜੋ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਸੀ ਅੱਜ ਵਾਲੇ ਦਿਨ ਕਹਿ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸੀ ਆਪਣਾ ਸਪਸ਼ਟੀਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਸਨ ਉਧਰੋਂ ਇੰਦਰਾ ਗਾਂਧੀ ਮਗਰਮਛ ਦੇ ਅੰਸੂ ਵਹਾਉਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਮੀਡੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਿਆਨ ਦਿੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅੱਜ ਮੈਂ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਨੂੰ 8:30 ਵਜੇ ਦੇਸ਼ ਨੂੰ ਸੰਬੋਧਨ ਹੋਵਾਂਗੀ ਤੇ ਜੋ ਇਹ ਸਭ ਕੁਝ ਹਲਚਲ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਦੇਸ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਦੇ ਕੋਈ ਹੱਲ ਤੇ ਅਮਨ ਸ਼ਾਂਤੀ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਵੇਗਾ ਇਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਉਹਨੇ ਕੋਈ ਸੰਦੇਸ਼ ਦੇਣਾ ਸੀ ਲੋਕ ਉਡੀਕ ਰਹੇ ਸਨ ਕਿ 8:30 ਵਜੇ ਪ੍ਰਧਾਨ ਮੰਤਰੀ ਨੇ ਕੋਈ ਸੰਦੇਸ਼ ਦੇਣਾ ਹੈ ਇੱਕ ਪਾਸੇ ਸੰਦੇਸ਼ ਦੇਣ ਆ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਪਖੰਡ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਸੰਦੇਸ਼ ਦੇਣ ਦਾ ਦਿਖਾਵਾ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਦੂਜੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਰਾਤੋ ਰਾਤ ਮੀਟਿੰਗਾਂ ਕਰਕੇ ਪੂਰੇ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਨੂੰ ਕਵਰ ਕਰ ਲਿਆ ਸੀ ਫੌਜ ਨੇ ਪਿੰਡਾਂ ਪਿੰਡਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਛਾਉਣੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਦਲ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਗਏ ਸਨ ਪੂਰਾ ਅੰਮ੍ਰਿਤਸਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਖਾਕੀ ਵਰਦੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਭਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਨੂੰ 8:30 ਵਜੇ ਤੇ ਲੋਕ ਉਡੀਕ ਰਹੇ ਸਨ ਕਿ ਆਖੇ ਕੀ ਜਾਣ ਕੇ 8:30 ਤੋਂ ਪੌਣੇ 9 ਹੋ ਗਏ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਆਇਆ ਪੌਣੇ 9 ਤੋਂ 9 ਵਜ ਗਏ 9 ਵਜੇ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਸਵਾ 9 ਵਜੇ ਦਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਦੱਸਦੇ ਨੇ ਫਿਰ ਦੂਰਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਟੀਵੀ ਉੱਤੇ ਤੇ ਆਣ ਕੇ ਉਹੀ ਦਿਖਾਵਾ ਕਰਦੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੀ ਮੈਂ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਹਾਲਾਤ ਦੇਸ਼ ਦੇ ਹਾਲਾਤ ਸੁਧਾਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੀ ਹਾਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸਾਰੇ ਸਹਿਯੋਗ ਕਰੋ ਦੇਸ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਮਨ ਸ਼ਾਂਤੀ ਚੈਨ ਹੋਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਖੂਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਡੁੱਲਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਸਾਰੇ ਭਾਈਚਾਰਕ ਸਾਂਝ ਬਣਾਓ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੀਆਂ ਮਿੱਠੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਪੋਲੀਆਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਕਰਕੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਭਰਮਾ ਰਹੀ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਜੋ ਕਹਿ ਰਹੀ ਸੀ ਇਥੋਂ ਅੰਦਾਜ਼ਾ ਲਾਇਆ ਜਾ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਰਣਨੀਤੀ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਗੰਦੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਰਾਜਨੀਤਿਕ ਲੋਕ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਗੰਦੀ ਬਣਾ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਰਾਜਨੀਤੀ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਪਾਸੇ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੇ ਬਿਆਨ ਦੇਣੇ ਦਿਖਾਵਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਦੂਜੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਮੀਟਿੰਗਾਂ ਕਰਕੇ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਨੂੰ ਉਜਾੜਨ ਦੀਆਂ ਪੂਰੀਆਂ ਤਿਆਰੀਆਂ ਕਰ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਵੱਡਿਆਂ ਵੱਡਿਆਂ ਅਫਸਰਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਡਿਊਟੀਆਂ ਲਾ ਦਿੱਤੀਆਂ ਗਈਆਂ ਸਨ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਅੱਜ 2 ਜੂਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਦਿਨ ਜੋ ਕੱਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਹੋਏ ਸਨ 11 ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਭਾਈ ਮਹਿੰਗਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਬੱਬਰ ਭਾਈ RAM ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਸ਼ਹੀਦੀ ਸਰੀਰ ਪਏ ਹੋਏ ਸਨ ਤੇ ਅੱਜ ਵਾਲੇ ਦਿਨ ਹੀ ਭਾਈ ਮਹਿੰਗਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੇ ਸਰੀਰ ਦਾ ਸੰਸਕਾਰ ਮੰਜੀ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੀਵਾਨ ਹਾਲ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਤੇ ਭਾਈ RAM ਸਿੰਘ ਦੇ ਸਰੀਰ ਦਾ ਸੰਸਕਾਰ ਲੰਗਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੀ ਇਮਾਰਤ ਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਖੁੱਲੇ ਥਾਂ ਤੇ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਕੁਝ ਸਿੰਘਾਂ ਸ਼ਹੀਦਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਘਰ ਵਾਲੇ ਘਰ ਲੈ ਗਏ ਸਨ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਤੇ 2 ਜੂਨ ਦਾ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਹੈ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਦਿਨ ਕੋਈ ਗੋਲੀਬਾਰੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਚੱਲੀ ਪਰ ਪੂਰੀ ਰਣਨੀਤੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੋਰ ਯੋਜਨਾਬੰਦੀ ਬਣਾ ਲਈ ਗਈ ਇਹ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਬਕ ਸਿਖਾਉਣ ਦੀ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਹਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੂੰ ਤੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੂੰ ਟੈਟੀਰੀ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਇਰ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਅਗਲਾ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਹੈ 3 ਜੂਨ ਦਾ ਇਹ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਕੱਲ ਨੂੰ ਸਰਵਣ ਕਰੋਗੇ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਕੱਲ ਵਾਲੇ ਦਿਨ ਗੁਰੂ ਅਰਜਨ ਦੇ ਮਰ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਹੀਦੀ ਪੁਰਬ ਵੀ ਸੀ ਜਿਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਮਨਸ਼ਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਇਰਾਦੇ ਸਾਫ਼ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਨ ਇਹ ਜੋ ਢਿੱਲ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਸੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਇਹਦੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਬੜੀ ਵੱਡੀ ਸਾਜ਼ਿਸ਼ ਲੁਕੀ ਹੋਈ ਸੀ ਜੋ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਕੱਲ 3 ਵਲ ਜੂਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਦਿਨ ਦੀ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਰਵਣ
ਸਿਰ ਲਵਾ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਸਿਰ ਝੁਕਾਉਂਦੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਆ ਨਾ ਕਿ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਿਰਫ ਔਰ ਸਿਰਫ 250 ਸਿੰਘ ਸੀ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਤੇ ਬਾਹਰ ਡੇਢ ਲੱਖ ਦੀ ਫੌਜ ਸੀ ਔਰ ਇੰਗਲੈਂਡ ਤੋਂ ਰੂਸ ਤੋਂ ਆਏ ਹੋਏ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਸੀ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਸੈਂਗਾ ਦਾ ਹੌਸਲਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਬੁਲੰਦ ਸੀ ਔਰ 1 ਜੂਨ ਨੂੰ 1 ਜੂਨ ਨੂੰ ਅਹਿਮਦ 11 ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਾਥੀ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਹੋ ਚੁਕੇ ਸੀ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਔਰ 25 ਦੇ ਕਰੀਬ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਾਥੀ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਜ਼ਖਮੀ ਹੋ ਚੁਕੇ ਸੀ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਹੌਸਲੇ ਹਾਈਏ ਵੀ ਬੁਲੰਦ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਹਾਈਏ ਵੀ ਹੱਕ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਖੜੇ ਸੀ ਸੱਚ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਖੜੇ ਸੀ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਜੀ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਹੀ ਆ 1 ਜੂਨ ਦਾ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾਣਦੇ ਆ 2 ਜੂਨ ਦੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਗੱਲ ਸੁਣ ਲਈ ਆ ਹੁਣ ਆਪਾਂ ਅੱਗੇ ਵਧਾਂਗੇ 3 ਜੂਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ 3 ਜੂਨ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਸਾਡੀ ਅਗਲੀ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਲਾਜ਼ਮੀ ਜੁੜੇ ਰਹੋ ਜੀ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਜੀ ਮਿਲਾਂਗੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਦੋਂ ਤੱਕ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਦੇ ਇਜਾਜ਼ਤ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਅੱਲਾਹ ਹਾਫਿਜ਼ ਜੰਗ ਹਿੰਦ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦਾ ਹੋਣ ਲੱਗਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਤੱਕ ਨੂੰ ਘੇਰਾ ਪਾ ਲਿਆ ਤਿੰਨ ਜੂਨ 1984 ਨੂੰ ਪੰਜਵੇਂ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਗੁਰ ਅਰਜਨ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਹੀਦੀ ਦਿਹਾੜਾ ਵੀ ਸੀ ਹਰ ਸਾਲ ਦੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਇਸ ਸਾਲ ਵੀ ਪਾਰੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਇਸ ਦਿਹਾੜੇ ਨੂੰ ਮਨਾਉਣ ਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨਤਮਸਤਕ ਹੋਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਪਹੁੰਚੀਆਂ ਸਨ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਬਹੁਤੀਆਂ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਉਹ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਸਨ ਜੋ ਦੂਰ ਦਰਾਡੇ ਦੇ ਖੇਤਰਾਂ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦਰਸ਼ਨਾ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆਉਂਦੀਆਂ ਸਨ ਤੇ ਰਾਤ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਹੀ ਰੁਕਣਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਸੀ ਗੁਰ ਅਰਜਨ ਦੇਵ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਸ਼ਹੀਦੀ ਗੁਰਪੁਰਬ ਨੂੰ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਅਚਾਨਕ ਲੱਗੇ ਕਰਫਿਊ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਝ ਢਿੱਲ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਗਈ ਇਸ ਮਿਨੀ ਢਿੱਲ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਝ ਕੁ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਉੱਥੋਂ ਬਾਹਰ ਚਲੀਆਂ ਗਈਆਂ ਪਰ ਬਹੁਤੀਆਂ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਖਬਰ ਬਾਰੇ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੱਗਾ ਕਿ ਕਰਫਿਊ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਝ ਕੁ ਢਿੱਲ ਮਿਲੀ ਹੈ ਅਚਾਨਕ ਹੀ ਬਾਅਦ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮਿਲੀ ਢਿੱਲ ਸੀ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਬੰਦ ਕਰਕੇ ਦੁਬਾਰਾ ਤੋਂ ਸਖਤ ਹਦਾਇਤਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕਰਫਿਊ ਲਾਗੂ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਆਈਆਂ ਹੋਈਆਂ ਸਨ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਉੱਥੇ ਹੀ ਰੁਕਣਾ ਪਿਆ ਅਚਾਨਕ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਪੂਰੇ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਕਰਫਿਊ ਲਗਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਪੂਰੇ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਫੌਜ ਤਾਇਨਾਤ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਹੈ 3 ਜੂਨ 1984 ਨੂੰ ਅੰਮ੍ਰਿਤਸਰ ਦੇ ਖੇਤਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਵੀ ਸਾਰੇ ਟੈਲੀਫੋਨ ਤੇ ਬਿਜਲੀ ਦੇ ਕਨੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਕੱਟ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਗਏ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਅੰਮ੍ਰਿਤਸਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਾਪਰ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਘਟਨਾਵਾਂ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਬਾਕੀ ਹਿੱਸੇ ਦੇਸ਼ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਬਾਹਰਲੇ ਦੇਸ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਖਬਰ ਪਤਾ ਨਾ ਲੱਗ ਸਕੇ ਉਸ ਸਮੇਂ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਮੀਡੀਆ ਜੋ ਚੈਨਲ ਜਾਂ ਅਖਬਾਰਾਂ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਸਨ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਫੌਜ ਦੀ ਤਾਇਨਾਤੀ ਜਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਹਮਲੇ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਕੋਈ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਤੱਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਹੁੰਚਾਈ ਜੇਕਰ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਹਮਲੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਜਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਫੌਜ ਦੀ ਤਾਇਨਾਤੀ ਬਾਰੇ ਕੋਈ ਖਬਰ ਪਤਾ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਤਾਂ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਇਹ ਇਕੱਠ ਨਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਜਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਥੋੜਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ 3 ਜੂਨ 1984 ਦੀ ਰਾਤ ਨੂੰ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੂਫਾਨ ਆਉਣ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਦੀ ਸ਼ਾਂਤੀ ਸੀ ਬਿਜਲੀ ਬੰਦ ਹੋਣ ਕਰਕੇ ਚਾਰੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਕੋਪ ਹਨੇਰਾ ਪਸਰਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੀ ਲੋ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਵੀ ਉੱਥੇ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਖਦਸ਼ਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਕੁਝ ਹੋਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਹੈ ਪਰ ਕੀ ਹੋਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਕਿਹੋ ਜਿਹਾ ਹੋਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਬਾਰੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅੰਦਾਜ਼ਾ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਪਤਾ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਬਹੁਤੀਆਂ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਵਾਪਸ ਘਰ ਜਾ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਕਣਗੀਆਂ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਲਈ ਜੇਕਰ
ਤੇ ਕਸ਼ਹਿਰੇ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇੱਕ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮਲਮਲ ਦੀ ਫਤੂਈ ਪਾਈ ਹੋਈ ਸੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਪੱਤਰਕਾਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਫਤਿਹ ਬੁਲਾ ਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਹੀ ਫਰਸ਼ ਉੱਤੇ ਬੈਠ ਗਏ ਪੂਰੇ ਕਮਰੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਖਾਮੋਸ਼ੀ ਸੀ ਕਮਰਾ ਬੰਦ ਸੀ ਇੱਕ ਘੁਟਣ ਤੇ ਹੁਮਸ ਵਾਲਾ ਮਾਹੌਲ ਬਣਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਬਿਜਲੀ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਪੱਖਾ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਚੱਲ ਰਿਹਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਪੱਤਰਕਾਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਹਿੰਮਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਜਾਪਦੀ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਉਸ ਡੂੰਗੀ ਖਾਮੋਸ਼ੀ ਨੂੰ ਤੋੜ ਸਕੇ ਅਖੀਰ ਆਪਣੀਆਂ ਕੋਖਵੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਤਿੱਖੀਆਂ ਨਜ਼ਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਡੇ ਚਿਹਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੜਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਸੰਤਾ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਪਥਰੀਲੀ ਖਾਮੋਸ਼ੀ ਨੂੰ ਤੋੜਿਆ ਤੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਭਾਈਓ ਅਸੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਮਾਤ ਲੋਕ ਛੱਡਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤਿਆਰ ਬੈਠੇ ਹਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਸਾਡਾ ਸਿਰ ਦਿੱਤਿਆਂ ਬਾਜ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਰਨਾ ਮੁਗਲ ਰਾਜ ਤੇ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਰਾਜ ਦੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਪਾਪ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਰਾਜ ਵਾਲੇ ਨੇ ਮੌਤ ਪਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜੋ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੇ ਹਮਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੁਰ ਜੋਰ ਅਪੀਲ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਦਾ ਮੂੰਹ ਤੋੜ ਮੈਂ ਜਵਾਬ ਦੇਣ ਕਮ ਕੇਵਲ ਕਮਰ ਕਾ ਸੈਨ ਕਰਨ ਕਮਰ ਕਾ ਸੈਨ ਕਰਕੇ ਤੁਰਨ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਇਹ ਦੋ ਹੋਰ ਕੋਈ ਵੱਡੀ ਗੁਲਾਮੀ ਦੀ ਨਿਸ਼ਾਨੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋ ਸਕਦੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੁਣ ਪਾਪ ਹੋਇਆ ਇਹ ਸੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਦੇ ਤੀਜੇ ਕੱਲੂਕਾਰੇ ਦੇ ਤੀਜੇ ਦਿਨ 3 ਜੂਨ 1984 ਦਾ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਇਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਕੱਲ 4 ਜੂਨ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ 5 ਤੇ ਫਿਰ 6 ਜੂਨ ਦੇ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਤੋਂ ਵੀ ਰੂਬਰੂ ਕਰਵਾਇਆ ਜਾਵੇਗਾ ਬੇਨਤੀਆਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਸੰਗਤ ਦੇ ਚਰਨਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿੱਦੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗੇ ਕਿ ਚਾਰ ਦਵਾਰੀ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੇ ਹਮਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਨੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਦਾਸ ਨੂੰ ਪੁੱਛਣ ਦੀ ਲੋੜ ਨਹੀਂ ਨਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਹੋਰ ਲੀਡਰ ਦੀ ਰਾਏ ਲੈਣ ਦੀ ਲੋੜ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣਾ ਖਾਣਾ ਤੇ ਪਿੰਡਾਂ ਤੇ ਸ਼ਹਿਰਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੋ ਸਤਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦਾ ਨਿੰਦਕ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਧੀਆਂ ਪਾਣਾਂ ਦੀ ਕਿਜਤ ਲੁੱਟਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਤੇ ਲੁੱਟੇ ਜਾਣ ਤੋਂ ਖੁਸ਼ ਹੋਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਾਠਕ ਪਾਉਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਸਾਹਮਣਾ ਖਾਣਾ ਤੇ ਸੋਧ ਦੇ ਚਾਹ ਤਾਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਪੱਕੀ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਚਰਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਚਾਰ ਜੂਨ ਦੀ ਸਵੇਰ ਚੜੇ ਫੌਜਾਂ ਦੇ ਅਮਰੀਕ ਸਿੰਘ ਲਾਲ ਕਾਰੇ ਸਿੰਘ ਛੱਡ ਦੇ ਅਜਾਬ ਕਾਰ ਵਾਲੀ ਜੋੜੀ ਫੌਜੀ ਉੱਤਰੀ ਉਹ 
हजारा फौजी मोया Today, we are learning about kindness and how important it is to be nice to one another. Are you ready? Let's go! Time to have some fun! Kindness is being a good friend. You can be a good friend by sharing and playing with someone new at the playground. If your friend is having a bad day, be kind to them. Tell them how great you think they are and give them a hug. This will definitely make them feel much better. Teachers are kind every day for helping us learn new and exciting things. Kindness is helping others. Ask yourself, who can I help today? Will you be a helper? Even pushing your friends on the swing is a kind gesture that is sure to put a smile on their face. is taking care of your pet and being nice to other animals you may see. Being gentle and loving to your pet is a wonderful way to be kind. is sharing with others. When you share, it shows that you care. And caring for others is the best way to be kind. is being nice to your brother or sister. How can you be kind to your brother or sister today? Can you say something nice, share your toys, or give them a great big hug for no reason? Your sibling is your best friend for life, so always remember to treat them with kindness. Kindness is thanking your local heroes, like police officers and firefighters. These heroes risk their lives every day to keep us safe. Their kindness towards others is an inspiration to us all. spending time with your family. Your family loves you more than you will ever know. So be sure to spend quality time with them. Listen and be kind.
are kind, it makes others feel good and puts a smile on their face. Every time you are kind to someone, it makes the world a better place. You can make a big difference. You are truly amazing. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, will you consider subscribing to our channel? And while you're there, be sure to check out our other fun educational videos at Clever Kids. Today, boys and girls, we're going to take a few minutes and draw on the pieces of paper in front of you something or someone you are grateful for. Taking the time for gratitude is so important for our peace of mind and our happiness. And it's a great way to remind ourselves how lucky we are for what we have and who we have in our lives. Afterwards, we're going to share what we've drawn with the rest of the class. Let's begin. Wonderful class. Now, who would like to come up first and share what you're grateful for? Me. Yes, Sarah, come on up. I'm thankful for treats because they give me oxygen. That's wonderful, Sarah. Thank you so much. Who would like to go next? I'll go. Jason, come on up. I told my parents because without them I wouldn't even be here. <laughs> and also they help me with my homework and I love them. Chocolate, I'm grateful for chocolate. Okay, Rebecca, thank you. Simon, why don't you come up and share with the class what you're grateful for? Come on up, Simon. I'll be right up here with you. <laughs> what are you grateful for, Simon? How would you like to play a game with your classmates to see who can guess whose hand you drew? Would you like that? All right, class, can anyone guess whose hand Simon drew? I think it's the hand of a policeman because they protect us and keep us safe. I think it's Simon's hand because he's grateful to have a hand. <laughs> Is it the hand of God? No. It's your hand, Miss Sanders.
At high school, I graduated with a 1.3 GPA. At university, I graduated with a 4.0 GPA. Top 5% of my university. How did I do it? I used to struggle to wake up in the morning. I used to struggle to drag myself to my desk. I used to struggle to open my textbooks. And even if I got that far, after 10 minutes, I'd get distracted and stop studying. I was average, just like most other students. I was in a constant battle with procrastination, and I was stuck in this cycle of not studying enough, then failing my exams as a result. I graduated high school with a 1.3 GPA. I felt like a failure. I was disappointed, frustrated even. So I made a decision. I decided that I can achieve more than that, that I am capable of making something of my life. So I thought to myself, how can I achieve that? I've been performing at average my entire life. How can I get out of that trap? How can I perform among the rest of the A-grade students? I realized it came down to my daily habits. What I do constantly, every day, will determine what grades I achieve. It was like a light bulb turned on in my head. What I do with my 24 hours will determine whether I succeed or fail. Those that perform in the top 1%, when they don't feel like studying, they do it anyway. And that's what I started to do. And that's what you need to do. You study hard, even when no one is watching. No one needs to understand how many hours you're studying. No one needs to know how early you wake up in the morning, because that's the quietest time in the day with the least distractions. No one even needs to know why you're doing it. You're not doing it because of the grades, or to prove to the people around you that you can do it. You're doing it because you have a burning desire. Step by step, day by day, become the best version of yourself possible. Far too many people are dreaming of graduating with a 4.0 GPA, but their actions don't match their ambition. They're dreaming of graduating at the top of their class and getting a scholarship to an Ivy League college. They're dreaming of being the best doctor, lawyer, or surgeon in their country. They're dreaming of buying a huge house and a fast car, but when it comes to studying, they can't last 30 years minutes without getting distracted. Don't make that mistake. Let your actions do the talking. Be obsessed with your studying, with learning, with growing. I've never met a successful person that wasn't obsessed with growing. That's what I did. I took out the binge-watching Netflix from my schedule and replaced it with personal development material. I read books, watched documentaries, watched educational YouTube videos. I connected with and learned from those students that had already graduated with a 4.0 GPA. I set goals. Every day. A certain number of hours studying before I could relax. I exercised daily. I ate healthily. I made sure I slept early and woke up early so that I could have a productive morning. It's these small decisions that you make. The seemingly insignificant decisions that build up over time to create extraordinary results. After a few weeks, you will start to see results. Your grades will start improving almost immediately. You will start feeling better about yourself, happier, more content with your life. And after years of living like this, you will be capable of achieving extraordinary things and you'll start to realize that your most wildly ambitious dreams and goals actually start becoming achievable. And when you decide that you've had enough of getting average grades, just like I did, let me warn you, it will be painful. It will be uncomfortable. But that's where the growth is. You're going to get thrown to the ground again and again and again. But when you have the determination to climb to the top of the class, and when you know that what you're doing by studying every day will be rewarded, you will begin to discover things about yourself that you never knew existed. You will have an energy that just 
build and build as you achieve success after success. And that's exactly what I did. And if I did it, you can too. I got rid of the mindset that I'm not smart enough to be among the top students in my class. It was a self-fulfilling prophecy that I was stuck in for a long time. I believed that I wasn't smart enough, and so my grades reflected that. Once I threw away that mindset, it freed me to become whoever I wanted to be. You write your own book. And if right at this moment you decide that you want to make this a new chapter, you can literally turn the page in your life and you can start a new chapter, still related to the old chapter. The whole book is about you, but the new chapter is a new you. It's a whole new story, and you can start writing the best chapters of your life right now.